Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back. Let's learn a little bit about. Yes, let's, let's learn. Match made a game. So, I mean, it's not a good. It's not. A did bad you see thing. all of the plants that were hanging on the ceiling? That's clearly the mark of someone who knows things about. I could herbs. hang plants off my ceiling, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> and it's thieves can't. Hidden in plain sight. Oh, oh, nat twenty. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. They like open up all their tentacles, like two to the side and one up and down, and you see that beak in the middle open up, and like a little tongue is flapping oh. back and forth. <laughs> so we'll say I'll give. Here we go. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Tabletop Notch. <laughs> We're gonna be diving in tonight with chapter three of Bruncalo. Let's we, go! We got our feet wet in the town of, of Bruncalo uh, last episode. We met some of the some of the key players in town. Um, still a few left to meet. Some big names yet to uh, yet to be discovered. But we are also very much on the cusp of uh, a mission of sorts. Of not, course. not on the cusp. <laughs> a cusp. Stay away from the fucking cusp. Triggering. Um, fingering the cops. I did not say that. Somebody said triggering. Said triggering. I said triggering, oh, and you said that. Said <laughs> you were the only one who said that. Don't say finger the cops with me. <laughs> Sorry. You thought she just went fingering. <laughs> I did. I thought that was all you. Oh, the cops fingering. Fingering. Wow. Oh, I'm um, sorry. So this, needs in today's episode, we will be potentially fingering the cusp, and before we do, <laughs> we have a number of things to uh, go Get around. It yep, we gotta gotta roll right into the. Who's going? First? <laughs> I don't know who to throw it to. Welcome. Who does what nowadays? Welcome to our Sunday night Twitch stream. <laughs> um, if you want to absorb this in a different way, we have a podcast that goes live on Tuesdays, wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, the YouTube VOD goes live, but only for our lovely patrons. Mm. They will get a special link on Tuesday. Otherwise, you'll have to wait till Friday, just like everyone else. We have a um, lot of new patrons this week. Yeah, so thank welcome. You all. Thank you so much. Um, and a lot of you have jumped into the Discord. Oh, some, some boosters. Yes, thank oh, you. Oh, yeah, we got boosters. So, and uh, thank you to all, some of them have been boosting for like a year now, but so thank you, old boosters, new boosters alike. Um, to get us those sweet little perks like extra animated banners and things like that. I saw that. the animated icons been updated to the new Yes, thank you, Coco Doco. One of our from campaign one to campaign two. Yes. Which is very cool. Um, so yeah, join us over on that Discord because there's lots of great ways to talk about the show in between Sundays. Uh, uh, whether it's lore stuff, uh, po posting fan art, um, talking about your own homebrew stuff. Uh, we're also on all the social medias that you might utilize um, at Tabletop Notch. Just search that, you'll probably find us. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, you, there's clips there, there's uh, behind the scenes stuff. I think the, the, a lot of the little quizzes from the oh, halftime yeah. shows, the puzzles? The puzzles and stuff, yeah. quizzes, puzzles, end up there. Um, so yeah. Yeah, some new puzzles, not this week, but some new puzzles in the works. And by mm. works, we've thought about them. Yeah. <laughs> They're not filmed. That's how works they <laughs> But are. they will be. <laughs> uh, no, we have some cool new ideas for some puzzles that are a little more Broncalo themed Broncalo. Uh, to mix into Broncalo. the into the Broncalo. already popular ones. Don't worry, Albert Race and, and Guess the Mimic are going yeah. nowhere. They're just gonna have heavy sepia tone, that's all. Yeah, that's what they're, I'm they're, all, they're all gonna be wearing cowboy hats. All the I mimics. was gonna say, oh, the mimics are wearing <laughs> cowboy hats. Can you please make some cowboy hats on those little people out there? <laughs> oh, the I was gonna use a Sharpie on Graven. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Graven could rock a cowboy hat. Oh, yeah. I could easily <laughs> rock anything he wants. <laughs> Even if, wait, no. <laughs> Gonna say Moving it. on. <laughs> I think that's it for me. <laughs> I look right. this way. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> um, we also, oh, uh, shout out to, again, our fandom community who's still doing just such an amazing job. Um, they even now have Discord badges. Oh. Um, 
Uh, for those of you that don't know, The Phantom is, is like super up and running now. They're doing a really good job, and especially now with this new campaign, hopefully we're gonna do a really good job like documenting everything so that the lore of the world is not lost to the episodes of, of Yeah, I mean, we when past. last campaign, we were playing a lot of catch up because it just had happened oh my later to the campaign, but now it's it's a great, great resource for being like, who is the person who works at that store or where, yeah. So yeah. really, really awesome resource. We really appreciate the work. I read on the Discord like what they're doing at the Phantom and what they're talking about, and I'm oh, like, yeah. I glaze over and I'm like, I have no idea what's going on, but you guys are crazy. <laughs> a lot of work. Yeah. so good. It's it a lot of work. Incredible. It is so yeah. much work. And they so get the cool. blue roll color, which I'm very jealous of. Maybe I'll have to start doing, <laughs> doing something with the Phantom, <laughs> just like a blue roll. With a blue roll. I never knew that that's the what you wanted this whole time. It's a great color. <laughs> it's like a shiny Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a lot of rolls. It's true. Okay. I don't have a blue one. Anyway. <laughs> Um, so thank you, you, no roll. thank you to those You'll people, and then also dude has been doing our timestamps as always, and as Ahmad on Discord. Thank you so they're much. So mm-hmm. um, <laughs> they're so funny. They're they're tasteful. I love oh, them. Yes, the the timestamps. Yes. Um, we've also got merch. Uh, we're I was just telling Matthew that we're going to be looking at putting the Samson and Samson imports on some merchandise. Yes. 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 We don't have anything yet, but that's probably going to be what we do next. Guys. You can get your stuff, but not for free. But not for free. Yeah, you will have to pay for the merch. Yeah, I'm picturing it in a tote bag. Then, Did you know, we post also like the link to the flipbook for this? In yeah, the so the yeah. link. T- yeah. Oh, did I? It's it's Is it's in nice? YouTube. I can't remember if there's even a command. Well, we will if it's not there, so you can browse through the yes. wonderful Samson and Samson. Oh, it's in the Discord. Catalog. That's where it is. I feel like it's I clicked on it and I could only see the very front page. Oh, no. Really? Page. Yeah. yeah. We'll I make sure that we can do the next. Okay. Um, I mean, I might be a complete moron, <laughs> but that was my experience. You are an idiot. Yes. Um, cool. <laughs> I took a screenshot of it and I couldn't <laughs> go to the intro or something. <laughs> um, but I, 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 oh yeah, at our Patreon, everybody gets uh, early access to YouTube videos. We're doing the recaps there as well. Those are available for everybody. Um, we owe you all a September Patreon PDF thing, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yep, that'll be good. Um, so that's gonna be in the works in the coming days when we're not playing Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> um, we have a problem, it's, it's pretty serious. Um, but I think that that's all. Yes, uh, a reminder that next week, if all goes according to plan, will be our first mini uh, oh, talkback yes. that we're calling. I know. Uh, did we announce this already? That we're calling Notch and Soda? Um, because we'll have a drink. Oh, right. Oh, that's that's great. Great. It's called Notch and Soda. Man's living up. <laughs> <laughs> it's October. I love it. Yeah. So we will hopefully be doing regular. It won't be nearly as long as our like actual tabletop talks, but oh. we'll just we'll chat about the episode and about what's going on so far so you can kind of get into people's yeah. heads. Um, so next week should be the first one of those. Um, so I believe that's it, unless there's anything else for people to say. I don't think so. I think we know. Yeah. Thanking all the people. That was pretty streamlined. That was good. Yeah. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> Thanking all the people. <laughs> Jordy. Take it away. Hey, <laughs> Deirdre, you should take over. <laughs> I, all right, I'll, I'll take over. Daughter Source, would you like to try? No, oh, I mean, sure. <gasps> yeah. yeah. Off the cuff. Scroll up. Scroll Here we go. Up. Scroll up. Improviser. Or, no, you can start at the bottom. That might be oh, easier. And it needs to be so, way faster. So, so, okay, yeah, start scrolling uh, up. And Donner then stop. Soros. Uh, cheered some bits. Uh, Mitzi oh, Moo cheered some bits. Um, <laughs> Jared, oh, no. resubscribe. Thank you so. Jared, what's his name? Resubscri- WK? WK1, resubscribe. Thank you so much, Jared. Crazy Locha, resubscribe. Thank you so much. He also bitted. Thank you so much. 500. R. R- Rovington uh, also cheered 100 bits. Thank you so much. Crazy Locha gave out five community subs. Wizren I E N C gave out one community sub. Really nice. crazy look Also gave out ten more ten. community subs. Oh. Crazy look at a thousand bits. Crazy Woo. Lucha. Crazy. 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 Luisa A O thirteen twenty seven <laughs> resubscribed on Prime. They've been here for two months. Oh boy. Tony <laughs> Toots resubscribed. Uh, thank mean. you all so much. You've been here for. 49 it's, months, that feels too long. Golden Dagger, I know, I know. <laughs> Golden Dagger 94 also did, did a bunch of bits and um, like Blinky. He was saying <laughs> that's been too long. Prob- it's time for you to can't, go. Um, resubscribe, J Brownie 1991 <laughs> cheered. I don't know. Oh, there's a lot, a thousand bits. We're Dude, they cheered a 50 bits. Oh shit, no, I that's can't. No, that's not true. Where did you leave off? Half Baked. Uh, uh, Half Baked 139 gave out two community subs. Dude, they resubscribed. Ali Slayer did 100 bits. Half Baked gave out two community subs. I stink it, I'm a dumb dumb. 15 community subs, thank, thank you so you. much. Sticky Wet Rat, do you like doing the, the like after? 
Do you... Oh no, you can you can take it. Oh. I just wanted to help where I could. <laughs> oh, so. oh my god! Sticky wet rat subscribed. Uh, I sing and I'm a dumb dumb resubscribed. <laughs> Happy feeding subscribed. I am Haley M subscribed. A troll gosh subscribed. Oh uh, oh yeah. Uh, thank you. I think that's all that's that's happened. Uh, thank you of guys. Recent. Thank you. It's wow. also uh, September on Twitch. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, Still September for yes. whatever amount. Of and time. hello the folks on TikTok. We don't have a monetary system set up for you yet, but yeah. you know, welcome. But thanks thanks for, for your, your diamonds thank you. and those and those diamonds jewels. and like sometimes they do like a little hat or something. And, and hats. Cool. <laughs> oh, the hat feels so nice. I hats. told you the monetization system. Oh, yeah. <laughs> One fire. hat equals two point five diamonds, and then <laughs> a diamond and a half <laughs> is. Is a shoelace. One penny. You need diamonds to win the game. Guys, <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be taking over that part. It but was, I might take over another part. It was very, the it call and the response was, that was well, so good. We can work something out. That was nice. We can do, we can work something out. All right, everybody. We have, oh, we have done the shout outs. We've done the announcements. It's time for us to dive into Broncolo. So once again, uh, different than the first campaign, we're going to throw it to the recap. And when that is done, we'll throw it to the intro. It's time to play. So let's go ahead and throw it over to the recap. The leaves. Here we go. Oh my god, I'm so excited. <gasps> I love the leaves. So much. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> Previously, on Chapter 2, Meat and Potatoes, the new arrivals to the camp spoke at length with hotelier Bassett Clemens, who offered them a scouting job at the behest of Bison Stott, the town's foremost prospector and the owner of Excavation On Demand. With an agreement to reconvene in the late afternoon, the party split up to better acquaint themselves with the town, including visits to the Sampson brothers, who can get you stuff but not for free, and Maeve Crittenden, who was immediately defensive but left the door cracked open for future business relationships. Morna failed to locate an old friend, TC failed to make a new one, and with the way Doxley treats people, it doesn't seem like she knows the meaning of the word. Kate spilled the beans to one alchemist and then sought out another, but the hour was quickly approaching to gather and head for the dig site. What awaits these folks in the downwield? And does Morna need to switch rooms to avoid the town's newest peeping Tom? Stick around and find out on Chapter 3 of Broncolo. day, not yet reaching prime off work hours, you might expect the action at a gambling joint to be a slow trickle. But the lucky heathen has a healthy crowd already, which will only grow further as the evening creeps closer and people look to the limited options for entertainment that Broncolo has to offer. The main floor is arranged in a roughly circular formation, almost like the tables are orbiting a small platform in the center that one might mistake as a stage for a musician or an entertainer to regale the patrons from. Instead, resting on the platform is a large block of white marble, what was once perhaps a statue, but has so many chunks that have been broken off of it that it now has an unspecific appearance. You can't see what it is, what kind of shape it might have been at the time. It's strange and a bit of an eyesore in an otherwise very elegant setup. And you watch as people who pass by kind of regard the marble block with at best indifference and at most disgust. Some people kind of look by and kind of move by. Not like they're bothered by it, but almost like they know what purpose it serves or what it was at one point, this object in the middle of the room. There's a couple of poker tables in the back left corner under a pair of brightly shining lanterns, 
But the most popular game in here seems to be some combination of a dice and card games. They have dice in their hands and there's some cards on the table. It produces a very pleasing atmosphere of quiet clacking. You hear the sort of skittering across the tables from all corners of the room as the bones are thrown across these sort of lightly indented wooden tables. Bones. Immediately upon stepping inside, TC and Morna look over to their left where a tiefling is approaching you sort of quickly as you've stepped in through the entrance of the door. One of the few tieflings that you've seen thus far in Broncalo is well-dressed. He has a puffy kind of floral patterned vest and a deep purple cloak that complements his lavender skin very nicely. So he has this kind of very light purple lavender skin. And he kind of strolls up to you. Good afternoon and welcome to the Lucky Heathen. Oh, First time, I presume? Yes, sir. My name is Teddy Haas, and I am the floor manager. It is my job to keep an eye on things, and I would be lying if I said I had not already noted your arrival earlier today. Hmm. I hope your journey was safe, even though it was eventful, I heard. Everybody seems to know our business already in this town. Very, uh, on the... On the money, as it were, around here. It is a small town so far, but growing quickly. <laughs> I hope that those made it to town did so without lasting injury. Uh, as to my knowledge, yes. As you see us. I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> I know that my employers, the Monteros, uh, would love to speak with you about your journey. They're not in at the moment, but they're always eager to hear about any cleric-related incidents. Huh. Montero's own this establishment. They do, yes, I am the floor manager. Mr. Haas, it was. Yes, Teddy Haas. Um, why are they interested in cleric-related incidents? Well, as self-described blasphemers, such activity is of interest to them. They've been tracking the frequency of their appearances and the methods and their use of ambush, things like that. Uh, I don't know what they plan to do with that information or if it's simply for their own peace of mind. But if they're here for your next visit, I know they would appreciate a word. Hmm. Right. Are they also coming back from that special meeting that was happening earlier today? Oh, you know about that, do you? <laughs> Heard a little bit. Small town, small town. As you said. They were indeed at the meeting, yes. Mm -hmm. Have not returned since then. Uh, but please, uh, I know you didn't come here to listen to me prattle on. All of our croupiers are vetted and well-versed in the table games. Um, uh, the most popular choice is Broncolo Double Pass, a delightful mix of luck and strategy, but I'm sure whatever your tastes are, something suitable can be found. Um, <laughs> sir, I couldn't help but notice the marble in the middle of the floor. Uh, a metamorphic stone, easy to carve. What was, is its purpose? Yes, you, you know your stone. I do indeed. It was taken, That's uh, some stone facts. Uh -huh. <laughs> it was taken from a, a church. The Monteros took it with them when they left. Uh. As a sort of, um biting their thumb at the clerics, as it were. Sits here in the center of the room uh, as a reminder that we are out of the sight of the gods. Um, they, as in, that's what's left of it after they took it. Yes, it was a statue in the church and they've uh, taken it from there and I believe it lost some pieces in transit. Hmm. It can be done. So a trophy of theirs, as it were. I think they like to think of it that way, yes. Thank you, Mr. Ross. Welcome. Uh, pick a table and let me know if you need anything. Yeah. And Teddy Haas, he walks away and he sort of goes from table to table. He puts his shoulder on some of the croupiers and sort of smiles and nods. He seems to be making the rounds a little bit. Yeah. Do I know what double pass is? Uh, not uh, that dumb one call a double pass. Okay. Uh, it's not not like a that. game you know. Ooh, I, Ooh, this is a special uh, version of double it's not, pass. No, no, it's not the Broncolo <laughs> version of double okay. pass. It's <laughs> Broncolo double so pass. So I don't know what it is. No, I've never played it. double pass. All right. Uh, Mr. Welker, I am not sure this is my kind of joy. What? Gambling or? 
having heathen statues in the middle. <laughs> Maybe a drink. All right. <laughs> but uh, I'm not much of a gambler. I'm happy to watch her. You know, you can try a low stakes table. It I'll, won't be. Right. Don't worry about losing your shirt on the first day. I'm not worried about losing my shirt. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's start with a drink. Right. They don't gamble shirts away. It's not that kind of. Uh, as far as, the, and I'll, you know, kind of lean in. We've already heard that somebody lost their, uh, uh, most of their percent in an establishment here while gambling. So who knows oh. what people bet around here. I see. I meant... Nothing. You mean at the table taking your shirt off? Like a strip. Like a strip game. Situation. And uh, TC will do like that. <laughs> Everyone in here seems to have okay. their shirts on. <laughs> Who knows what could happen? Okay. Uh, I, I drink. Yes. Okay. There oh, is yeah, okay. there is sort of a long table over on the left side that uh, there's some seating there that is available for drinks. There's someone behind the bar there. Do people seem to be like walking around with drinks? Yes. In fact, there's very few people there. It seems yeah. like some people come over there. They put drinks on a tray and they take them to the table. So people sit at the mostly sit at not that you couldn't be there, but most people are sitting at the gambling tables themselves at the play tables. Well, yes. Let's uh, let's go get a drink. But I I will say. Uh... Rather I, than hover. I follow your lead, Mr. Welker. If you would wish, right. I will gamble. <laughs> I wouldn't dare force you to no, do anything not. you didn't want to do. Only letting I, you know that were you to follow me around and over I, hover over my shoulder, I, you might give both of us a bad thing. I will not do that. Oh. I will assimilate. Uh, All right. Go over to the bar area. To the bar, not one of the tables, sorry. Yeah, to get Great. a drink first. Yes, you yeah. do so. And you need a guy. Hello there. Welcome to Lucky Heathen. Thank you. Uh, something I can get for you. Yes, a uh, glass of uh, wine. Uh, sure, of course. Uh, two silver for the house wine. Uh, two? Yes. And I'll, I'll pay the four silver. Gets a couple of, they're kind of like very narrow, long shoots, these glasses of wine. So they're like very Ooh. tall and these little, you can see a couple other people. Some of the like sort of rougher looking people that are in here are sort of like spilling it a little bit. Like it, it's awkward to hold. It's obvious that func the, the fashion was over the function of it. It's like weighted a little weird. Mm -hmm. So, but mm -hmm. they, they look quite nice. Some whiskey colored wine. Oh, yeah. yeah, some whiskey wine. Um, <laughs> um, here you are. Just call it a down oh. payment on your on your first round. It's on me. Well, thank you. I'll get the next one, I guess. Uh, all right. Uh, I I'd like to check out this new game. I haven't played this game before. It's double pass. All right. Um, me neither. Good luck to you. Mm. Here you go. I'll give him a uh, I'll give him like a, a two copper tip. Sure. I'll put that on the bar there. Thank you. Slides. It's a poorly made glass. <laughs> <laughs> seems, seems to be holding my drink just fine. <laughs> Not leaking. At least. As he walks away from you, it looks like also he's cleaning a couple of them, like behind the counter, and that looks like a pain in the ass too. <laughs> he has like a, a, a piece of cloth on a rod that he has to like clean them. And he, he doesn't seem to be complaining, but it's... it's the finger uh, the cusp. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, mm. Is that the name of the drink? <laughs> uh, our finest finger cusp. Yes. <laughs> uh, I'll look for, uh, again, the, the, these tables that might have two or three open seats. Yeah, there's a couple open seats on one of the tables. Let's learn. Let's. We've got a couple of open seats if you'd like to join us. Uh, Broncolor Double Pass, all right with you? Uh, yes, but I'm afraid. You will have to teach us. You'll have to teach us. Of course, of course. New rollers, new rollers. He sort of announces <laughs> in the area. Let's learn a little bit about. Yes, let's, let's double learn. Pass. Match made a this game. So cool. <laughs> We're gonna have everybody play here real quick. Uh, everybody oh. grab three d six for me. Okay. okay. Oh, I thought it was gonna be a fun little Bronco NPC. Um, you can, you might also end up being an NPC. Oh, okay. Oh. Got it. What, what's my voice? So here's how Broncolo Double Pass works. It's a sort of mostly dice game, a little bit of betting strategy involved in it. What, uh, the first thing to know is it's played in two rounds, two quick rounds. And the game always starts with you rolling 3d6 and then keeping that roll to yourself. You don't want the other people to see you roll. So have something to cover your <laughs> dice with. 
The best hand that you can possibly have is three of a kind and the best and higher the better. So the best hand in the whole game is three sixes. If you roll three sixes, it's the best possible thing you roll. Okay. After three of a kind, after three of a kind is a straight of any kind. So three numbers in a row, whether it's two, three, four, four, five, six, any, any three numbers in a row. After that, a pair. So two fives and then some other random number. So it's three of a kind, straight, pair, and then just having a high dice. So you could have one, two, six, and like that's, it's not much, but it's something to have. Mm -hmm. Now, between straights, having a four, five, six is better than a yep. three, four, five. Yep, higher, always better. And it's not like ace rules where one, it can be like five, six, one. Nope, that's not. No, nope. can't wrap around, yep, okay. can't wrap around. Damn, because these cool new dice that I got from our friend Steven, <laughs> the six is like a one. Oh, oh yeah, I did, I grabbed my yeah. gambling dice. Like they definitely oh. have, we got this, thank you, Steven, yeah. for your uh, wonderful brunk all the dice. Oh, so cool. So lovely, they are gonna confuse me on this game, so I'm not gonna <laughs> use it. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, wait, why? Oh, I see. Because I'm gonna think it's little... an ace. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm. Got it, got it, got it. Okay. So you see on the table is laid out a number of face down. Ooh. I saw it, that one had a Kuzni on it. <laughs> <laughs> They're all Kuznis. <laughs> oh yeah, can we bring up the uh, this? You do it. There we go. Okay. It's the oh, verdict you, controls, you, and the controls are also not. Yeah, can you just manually? The remote's busted. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay. Nice. That. Love it. Is that all of them? Yep, Excellent. just those there. Great, that's perfect. Excellent. Oh, and then. Uh, here, I'll move it. Up a there we go, TikTok. There we go. Oh. Love it. Ooh, TikTok gets even more. Now, these are not, <laughs> these are not oh. playing cards, and they're not random either. You'll see, they have numbers on them. Okay. And the game starts with the first what? one. Okay. This is just a one. Is it always oh my just a one? Yep. Today. Okay. Nope. Yeah. Okay. First card revealed. Oh! <laughs> always. <a one. laughs> oh, started with a one. <laughs> All right. Okay. Here's the way it works. To the left of the dealer is what's called the set. That's just the person who plays, who acts first. Okay. And you get to choose to either double or pass. Ooh. Ron call a double pass. Okay. <laughs> okay. Pass. Here's the important part about this game that's different from a lot of other card games. You can fold, or in this game it's called ducking, which is to leave the game, yeah. at any time, not just on your turn. Like in poker, you wait until it's your turn and you fold if you don't like what's at the table. You can duck out at any time. If you look at your dice and you have a terrible, terrible hand, like one, two, four is a shit yeah. grouping of three dice, you can just duck out and you can do that right at the beginning. If you do so, you pay this amount of silver into the pot. Oh. You pay one silver into the pot. Okay. Now, the first person to act, the set, gets to decide based looking at his dice, may, bluffing or otherwise, whether to double or pass. Now, if you pass, you stay in the round, but it doesn't increase the wager in the middle. Okay. That's different than ducking. Ducking, you're out I of just the round. Leave entire. it to yep, the next you person. Leave, yep. okay. So you can pass it. Or you can double it, and if you okay. double it, okay. it goes then to it two. Revealed, then it goes to two. Oh, damn. And now the bet is three because it's one plus. Two. No, no, no. Now we're just on two. Oh, okay. okay. But the uh, the cards stay revealed because it's a good way to keep track of. Like, let's say. So very. Fr Every, everybody, roll your three d six. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, we'll play it out. It'll be it'll be the next one. Okay. 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 <laughs> Down. Does anybody hate their dice that they've rolled? And yes. Like, <laughs> so let's say, let's, this is a good example. Let's say you ducked out. I'm out. So we would place a marker indicating that one person ducked out on the, oh. on the one silver. Okay. And then, so one person is ducked out. So we have four players left, mm -hmm. and we would go to the set, the first person on the dealer's left. Double. You would double. So now we're on this. So now before it passes to Erica, everyone again, anyone want to duck? I would you like to duck. You may duck. So you now hmm. owe, two. owe two silver into the pot. Okay. And play passes to Deirdre. I would like to pass. Pass. So it remains on two, but you're still in. You've already ducked. The double one. Double it mm. is. Great. So we double again. <gasps> so now the other players have a chance to. Fibonacci. <laughs> <laughs> double. You No, you don't get to Damn. play. You have the option to duck or not. No. Great. So the, it now has finished the first round okay. there. So now, everybody who's still in, which is three people left, now we go to round two. It's played in two rounds, that's it. That was the first round, mm, okay. it's done. 
Oh. Now we're in round two. Double. <laughs> in round two, <laughs> you'll get your chance. Damn it. In round two, the remaining players have the option to re-roll one of their dice. Oh, y'all should have seen If him, you man. do, you must do it out in the open. You don't they get, get to hide. Everyone, gets, oh, everyone cool. gets to see your roll die. Okay. Would you like to re-roll one of your dice? No. Would you like to re-roll? Yes. You may do so and put it like out in the middle oh. so everyone can see it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, just put it out there. So You're supposed the to go, oh. <laughs> oh. Right. Would you like to re-roll? Sure. No. You may do so. Right? And you can put, so it's a five, so people know. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. on a reroll, you get to see, but there's obviously strategy. If you choose not to reroll, they don't know what your dice were. Double. Play continues in the exact same way. Are you doubling? Yes. Oh, sorry, before he oh, doubles, does anyone want to duck? No. <laughs> Me? Oh duck. my so, goodness. There is a, now a token on the four. <laughs> so now there's four, five, six, seven silver in the pot right now. So it just cum accumulates. Now play goes double. No. <laughs> play goes to you. You can duck, pass, or double. Double. Mm. double. So it doesn't go. Oh, oh that's the wrong oh, one. Oh, shit. 32. <laughs> Front call of math. <laughs> <laughs> so it, there's no chance for it to just go on infinitely. Yeah. That would constitute the end of the round. So now you are both in mm -hmm. for 16. So you're the last people. Okay. So there you go. 16 silver. Yep. But they've paid in a certain amount already, adding to that, right? Mm -hmm. They have paid in this Oh, amount. I see, I see. Yep, so it marks each how much each person has invested. <laughs> mm -hmm. And now you would reveal your hands. And that's easy, that's it, it's that easy. <laughs> what do you got, bitch? <laughs> Go ahead and reveal it for the camera. Oh! Again. A three, four, five. Three, four, oh, five. oh, wow. Oh, Lovely straight. Gnarly. Uh, I have a three, five, six. Three, five, six. <laughs> oh, <laughs> bluffer over here. Yeah. So oh, you would cool have won here. 32. Would uh, 30. have. <laughs> I just won that. Come on. <laughs> that was the exemplar. Uh, so so it's really quick. Anthony, it's just well played, played in two quick rounds. Okay. Double. I mean, right. I had one of the best things outside of a three of a kind. I had one of the best rolls. That's so fine. if if the whole group keeps doubling, it can add up very, very quickly. Yeah. Now it's yeah. in silver. So this would be, you know, 1.6. Gold yeah. with 16 silver. The reason she ended it is because she's the end of the before yep. the dealer. She's the last one who gets to double it each time. Yep. And then, and then when the next play <laughs> happens, <laughs> it rotates. The, the yeah. set rotates. So you're not the first to act. When she time. doubles, though, we all get another chance to bunk, bunk out, right? But right before it flips? Um, uh, no. At the very end? No, I guess not. It wouldn't yeah. matter. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. you're, right. you're already in for that amount. Okay. Got it. So that's okay. it. So he explains the yeah. rules to you. <laughs> Sorry. So, <laughs> as TC and Morna sit down to play, you guys can be the other NPCs of the table. Oh, there. here we go. <laughs> can we do your Hold up my voice, Karen. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Aaron Broncolo. If you want that. Would you like some tea? Yeah. Yeah, I would. Welcome to the table. Mm. There's my eighth game today. <laughs> <laughs> I've lost everything. <laughs> Colorful local game, Morna. So oh, we'll right. allow, uh, uh, we'll say that, um, who's our NPC over here? Roger. Roger. <laughs> Roger's the set. Okay. So, which means, uh, oh. rolls, everyone. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ducks. No ducks. Set to Roger. Double. Hmm. Ducks? No, thank you. Double. <laughs> Ducks, anyone? <laughs> Play moves? Oh, I'm fine. Pass? <laughs> Pass? <laughs> Play moves down the line? He's fine. <laughs> I'm gonna have to pass. Pass to new player? I'll double. Ducks. All right. Round two. Reroll. Reroll on request. <laughs> we'll start with the set and move around. Reroll. Reroll, mate. <laughs> Roger. <laughs> what is, what that? is that? Just It's a one. It's a one. <laughs> Reroll. Yes. It's a two. 
Reroll. Roll. Roll. Yeah. And four. Four. Reroll. I'm going to have a reroll as well. That's another fucking one. Reroll. <laughs> I'll do one here. Mm. Rerolls across the table. Mm. Six. Six. Play returns to the set. Pass. <laughs> I'll double. Ducks. Hmm? Play continues. Double. <laughs> <laughs> Ducks. Duck. Ducking. <laughs> Ready to silver into the pot. Play continues. Uh, I'm in your pass. Passing. I'll pass. Pass as well. That takes us. So all in at 32. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Reveal, uh, starting uh, your ducked out, so next. I have two fives and a two. Two fives? Pair of fives? Have a three, four, five. <laughs> three, four, five straight? <laughs> Double one. Double ones? Double ones with a six high. Mm. Game to the three, four, five straight? <laughs> I knew game nine was mine. <laughs> Congratulations, mate. Uh, thank you. <laughs> so 30, oh, 32 silver from both of you. So three gold, two silver there. That was a big pot. That was a big pot. <laughs> NPCs are high rollers over here at this point. <laughs> 32 silver. All right. One more round? Yeah. As, uh, I'm going to duck out on that one. <laughs> my luck. I, uh, <laughs> I think I feel the beginner's luck coming on this time. I'm Excellent. Try again. Uh, set moves to new player. And we begin. You gonna play with us again, Mom? Can I sit in the new person? <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to play, you just want to be a different person. Yeah. Helen's character uh, showcase. <laughs> Welcome to the table, uh, Brighton. Brighton? Brighton. Brighton. Welcome Brighton. to the table, Brighton. Uh, our set is, uh, I didn't get your name? Uh, Morna. Uh, Morna, set to Morna. Uh, rolls, please. Here we go. What are you looking at, Roger? Ducks. Duck. Duck. The old loser. Play to the set. Ah, uh, double. Mm, play to Brighton. Double, please. Oh, uh, sorry, before play to Brighton, uh, ducks. I'll duck. Um, um, oh! And then Interesting. And double, double, please. Play? Ah. Play to Roger. Double it, mate! <laughs> Any ducks, anyone? Ducks. All right. Three players into round two. Rerolls. Re -roll. Starting with the set. Yes. Reroll. Can I? Oh, it's too late. <laughs> it is a four. Four. Hmm. Reroll. Yes, please. <clears throat> it is a five. Five. <laughs> five from Brighton. Roger, reroll. <laughs> It is a two. Two. Ducks. Duck. Duck. <laughs> a day, mate. Roger. Two players play to the set. Good luck. Brighton's uh, a real pompous. <laughs> 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 Sits Jeez. down like he owns yeah. the fucking place. Double it. <laughs> oh. Play to Brighton. <clears throat> Double. Hello? Well, two in at 32. Reveal. You first. <laughs> Pair of sixes. <gasps> Pair of fives. Ooh. Ooh. Congratulations. Thank you. That is, uh, well, uh, is 64, uh, another eight, um, 72, 74, 75. Damn. So. <laughs> nice work, young lady. <laughs> So seven gold, five silver from that end. Mm. That's how nice. it works. Morning, oh, my dear. Mighty five. Well done. I think I shall quit. Oh, quit while you're ahead, you say? All right, I, I think I'll do one more. Very one well. more? Oh, Very well. please, Morna. <laughs> you did so well, you could play one more. <laughs> Don't pressure the players, Don't. please. <laughs> Unbiased. Fine, I'll do one more. Oh, Very well. Very well. <laughs> Set to Brighton? Yes. Rolls, please. 
Ducks. Very well, play to the set. It's too bad one can't quadruple, but double. <laughs> is a shame. It is a shame. Ducks. Very well, play continues. I'm also gonna double. Ducks. Play continues. I'll double. Well, again. Big first round. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ducks. Play continues. I reckon it's a double, mate. Oh. <laughs> All right. Very well. Ducks. And finally. A uh, double. Again. What is this? Jesus. Ducks. Very well. We move to the second round. Rerolls. Roll to the set. No, thank you. Hold. Yeah, I have a reroll. Reroll. That's one. One. Re Again. <laughs> under the guise of checking my dice under my hand, mm. can I attempt to like hit a die? You definitely can. At these tables, there's like a little private area where you roll. It's yeah. like it's in front of you, and there's like a little lid. Okay. And it does like they require that you have your kind of hands out, so you would have to like slip it in because there's there's preventative measures against certain, it's not impossible, yeah. but you'd have to kind of like get it down and slip it kind of just inside. It's possible, but tricky. Because there are some measures against doing, manipulating the dice. Not today. <laughs> not today. I, don't get, I don't wanna get thrown first out of one on the first day at Bronco. Let me scout the place first. All right, all right. Um, I will reroll one. Two. Reroll. No, not this time, laddie. No reroll. I will hold. Holding as well. Very well. We move to round two. Play to the set. Double, please. Roll again. Ducks. No ducks. Play continues. I'm gonna double it. <laughs> Very well. Big round. Big round. <laughs> Big round. Big round. <laughs> As this is going on now, <laughs> this is a you, yes, game. it's a, not only a very big pot, some of the people at the other tables are kind of <laughs> like checking mm. out just to see, because the, okay. the, the you can the person, the, yeah. the croupier continues to sort of big pot, big pot, yeah. So some people are others getting the attention of some other people. Yeah, that's there. right. Uh, were you last to double there? Yeah. That was just you, great. Ducks, ducks. Looking a little nervous over there, boy. Play continues. Uh, th that's Anthony, it's not TC. <laughs> <laughs> TC is looks looking cool bad, yeah. as a cute TC is like, uh, reveling all the people looking around. Um, I'm going to, oh my god. Tick tack. I'm gonna go to like take a drink <laughs> and put it on the edge and like try to put it on the edge as though I'm and and oh and it falls. Okay. And I drop oh. and I drop my glass and uh, pause play. Pause play. Right as that hits the ground, I want to go in and try to swap a die. Okay. <laughs> give me uh, give me a deception check first for the sort of uh, <laughs> acting of the of the spilling. Okay. 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 I'm gonna put these dice over here real quick. A deception check. Mm -hmm. God, what am I doing? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, deception. Oh God. Uh, this. Um, 14. 14, okay, you sell the actual, you put it down on the edge and without too much like, oh, what yeah. have I done? Uh, it just kind of slides naturally off and you like go to kind of catch it quickly. Yeah. And at the same at time, the other time hand, I go in. And give me a sleight of hand check. Oh, <laughs> oh fuck. <laughs> I don't know. 10. 10. As you sort of move your hand, it's enough of a deception to not be so egregious. In fact, it almost looks like an accident. However, the croupier clocks it right away. Okay. Um, I'm afraid, sir, hands inside the box at this point disqualifies oh. you from the round. <gasps> my well. goodness, I, I, I dropped my drink. I, I didn't... I'm sorry to say the rules of the table to prevent uh, tampering with the dice. Do we still get his money up to this point? He would yeah, have he's... to put in. That's effectively. Uh, that is effectively. Um, uh, what do they call it? Uh, well, uh, it's a it's a duck. The duck. Yeah. He's yeah. he's ducking. Uh, better luck next it's time. An effective duck. I'm sorry, sir. Next round. Next round. Tough oh, luck. I can see what kind of an establishment this is. 
So that was 12 gold, 8 silver that you oh, have to put into the box. I rolled a 4 on that slide of hand. At least you didn't get thrown out. Oh, yeah, it was just man. enough to... He, he didn't think it looked malicious, but he just yeah. is enforcing the policy of the Lucky Heathen. Uh, a play con- uh, sorry, any other ducks? Any other ducks. A play continues. Well, <laughs> we made it this far. Double it! Ducks. Very well, play continues. I suppose we have to double it. <laughs> Very well. <laughs> Uh, I think that's last, right? That's the last mm-hmm. one. Very well. Yes, he started, started the round. Started. Yep. Uh, that takes us to 51 gold, two silver per player remaining. Sort of saying that's a reminder. Reveal. <laughs> Starting with the set. Triple twos. Oh Triple my twos. God. Continuing on. Straight one, two, three. Triple hmm. twos remain strong. Ficky. Continuing on. <laughs> Triple twos. Triple twos. We have a tied pot. Oh, Triple shit. fives. Oh Triple shit! Oh, come fives. Oh, man. To the new player. Morna. That gives you. I'm oh, ruined. My <laughs> I'm ruined. God. Brighton has the lead down. <laughs> four. D. Oh D. Oh D. You what? just picked up two hundred and. Oh no, one of those is yours. Sorry. Holy smokes. So you got uh, 166 gold and four silver. Oh my god, <laughs> And I lost oh, roll, gold and lassie. silver. And I lost my pants to a pair of nine. And I'm sorry, <laughs> you said 12, 12 silver? Uh, 166 gold, four silver. Four silver. Holy shit. That was, let me double check that, because you were one of the 512. So it's three yeah. times 512 plus 128. I can't believe you both had triple twos and got Fucking BS. <laughs> great. I was, yeah. I had 166 gold, four silver. I had two wow. threes, and I was trying to swap a two to a three, so I would have uh, had triple threes. <laughs> Still would have lost. Damn, I know. What That's hand. not a split at all or anything, right? No, I mean, the higher number wins, yeah. So as that hand concludes, all the people around you are, oh, good hand, good hand. Well done, well done. Very nice. Excellent job, very, very good hands all around. I'm gonna take a quick break. Feel free to sit or walk around or be right back. Thank you. Mm. Just stands up. Morna, I will remember this, and I leave. <laughs> <laughs> Morna is a beautiful name. Uh, thank you, Roger. <laughs> so some people, some of the other patrons begin to get up and sort of mill about, maybe find another table or, or go get a drink from the bar. So TC and Morna. My goodness, Morna, I, I... I am sorry about your glass. I will buy you another drink. <laughs> that is very kind. <laughs> I think I'm. I all, think they are very poorly made. My butterfingers. Uh, very easy to fall off. Cost me almost. I'm not sure gold. who would design a glass like that. <laughs> Did you have a very good hand? Uh, it was. It wouldn't have beaten yours. Is all I'll say. Oh, well, then I suppose it is all right. Are you glad that you tried it out? I feel I was lucky. <laughs> well. Uh, Both of you give me perception checks. And sorry, what were you about to say? I was just gonna be like uh, trying to flag down somebody to get. Yeah, you can get another drinks. Two two silver for the for the house drink. Great reception. Money bags. Holy smokes! (laughs) Morna with some delightful newcomers luck. That is crazy. (laughs) Eleven perception. And thank you for my NPCs for uh, playing it straight and not <laughs> dumping a bad hand into the pot, <laughs> <laughs> fellow player. I, mean, I thought I was gonna win. I couldn't believe that. everyone was doubling. Yeah, yeah. That, bonk, that was three, three of a kind. So. Sorry, you, and sorry, a straight. You said and a straight. Perception. Oh, yeah, it's perception. Thirteen. <laughs> Eleven. Eleven. Okay. With a thirteen, as you go to uh, flag down one of the people that's carrying drinks, he comes around, pours a new drink for both of you to sit and, and enjoy the comfort of your winnings. You see, as you've been here, quite a few people have come in and out of the place. But none that caught your eye in particular until this one. A human woman with broad shoulders and a shaved head that's kind of standing at the entrance. She has very kind, kind of thoughtful eyes that scan the interior of the room. And with a rag, she's like wiping away some of the sweat and grime from her neck and the back of her head and her forehead as if she's kind of been working in the outdoors. That and the rising and falling of her chest give you the impression that she's in the middle of, or maybe just concluded, some very taxing manual labor. She's like, 
sort of breathing heavy, sort of patting herself down with the, with the rag. And with some kind of curiosity and trepidation, she looks over to you and she approaches you, <clears throat> kind of coming over to the table where you are. Mona. With the description they gave me of who stopped by, I said I had to see her myself to believe it. Josie? Back in Nunesia, you were barely tall enough to peer out the window. <sighs> Look at you now. <sighs> Look at you. Nice to see an Ishtig in the wild again. Speaks well to the camp's prospects that good masons are making their way to Brunkhog. I... I know it may be odd, but <laughs> I, um... I thought I could try my fortune here. <laughs> I heard you had a timber claim and had some success. I do indeed. How are you? How's the family? Um, um they are, they're, uh, they're dead. Oh. I'm the only Ishti in the wild left. I am genuinely very sorry to hear that. Please, have a seat. I can buy you a drink. Please. Um, That's... What, what, what will you have? Um, uh, just whiskey's fine. Yes, um, and I'll flag somebody over. Sure. Um, I'll introduce... <laughs> and I'll, I'll try to introduce th uh, this. I came in on the wagon with Mr. Welker here. Josie, Kennedy. TC. Pleasure. I run the timber claim. Ah. Morna and I uh, have some family shared history. We used to live in Unesia together, but the Ishtigs moved a while back out of the city. We went to uh, Periphera. Yes. Seems safer. You weren't the only ones to move, but we were sad to see you go. Yeah. Did you stay there? Is your family well? They're still there. Yes. Um, when your family left for the outskirts, my parents always thought it was a damn shame. Plus, the Masons that moved in to replace all of you were quite shit. <laughs> Ishtis have a, a long line of it, so it's hard to replace, I would say. So, um, in Brunk Hollow to set up shop, there's a couple of nice pieces of property along the road east, though I think there's some other interested parties involved in the bidding. Would... I am sorry, I know so little uh, all of these dealings here. I was hoping you could make an introduction for me with people who may have property and means to set up. Sure. You're looking for a place to set up yourself, or are you looking for a job? Um, well, I don't know of any stonemasons in town. I'm happy to set up something myself, but in the meantime, I'm looking for work. Well, I could be interested, maybe, yeah. Trusted hands are hard to come by around here. Desperate folk will look you right in the eye and tell you they're a carpenter of 20 years experience, <laughs> only to thoroughly embarrassing themselves the following day. Yeah, it seems there's a lot of desperate folks here. Sure, but some looking for a new beginning or taking advantage of what Broncolo has to offer. Hmm. Why don't you come by my place tomorrow morning? We can talk about it. Thank you. I wasn't even sure if you'd remember me. <laughs> sure, of course. I remember. It is good to see your face. Good to see you as well. Um, and Mr. Welker, uh, an associate of yours. Uh, we only met this morning. Fast friends. This morning you, you came in on the Mackland wagons. We did. Uh, apparently it is of some notoriety. When a cleric shows up in the cusp, people hear about it. Do you uh, know who we might have been after? I don't. Do you? No. <laughs> Can I tell if TC is... Telling the truth. <gasps> About not knowing. About not knowing. Making it make yes. sense. Yes. Inside checks. <laughs> big one, big one. <clears throat> little one, little one. <laughs> um, that is a... That's a six. That's a six, yeah. <laughs> no, you get no impression either way from oh. him. Um. <laughs> no? Uh, forgive me. Uh, yes. Broached it, the, the, the topic of properties. There are still plenty um, going up that uh, newcomers, well, I shouldn't say newcomers, but uh, newer people to town are still uh, taking up property and, and 
There's still plenty of room for that? Of course, yes, plenty of land to go around. A lot of it has at least been staked as a claim, so you have to go through the owner of the claim unless you get much farther out from the town, which for a stonemason, probably not the best option mm. to haul it back into town. Mm. I imagine you'd have to come to town with quite a bit of money to get set up quickly. Uh, do people end up staying at the uh, hotel for long stretches before they can find property? It's common, yes. Uh, people either stay at the hotel or they pitch a tent at one of the sort of tent colonies just outside of town until you find a place where you can set up. Most of the unbuilt upon lands are owned by either Bison or Izzy Narvos. Mm. Don't know if those names are known to you yet. Mm. We haven't met them in person, but we have heard. They were some of the earliest settlers of Brunk Hollow, so many of the claims belong to them. Mm. If you hadn't already uh, happened by, my place is Trusted Timber, and you would have passed it on your way into town. Just as across the street from uh, Bernard's. It looks quite busy. Yes, uh, a lot of construction being done. Uh, I just finished, um, there was some meeting, I won't bore you, but uh, they're looking for some construction done at one of Bison's dig sites, so we were discussing the terms of that. Mm. Oh, uh, nothing too untoward is going on, nothing, uh, no trouble brewing. Oh, um, and she kind of looks to Morna, to not in a sort of as if to almost raise an eyebrow and be like, are we okay to talk in front of this guy? Uh, as <laughs> subtly as she can, <laughs> okay. she's gonna... Nothing of note. Just the usual. I think they're looking for scaffolding at one of the dig sites so they can get down deeper. Anyways, I, I won't keep you. Um, tomorrow morning, if you can. I will be there. Excellent. Nice to meet you, Mr. Welker. Lovely to see you. It is good to see you, Josie. As you can see, I'm a little out of place here. I don't come to the Lucky Heathen all that often. It is, uh... It's not my place either, I would uh, say. I wouldn't say. <laughs> Morna just made away with a jackpot of Beginner's it. luck. <laughs> well, couldn't happen to a better person. Mm. Good afternoon. <laughs> she gets up heads back out toward the door. It did seem, you got the impression a little bit, like she was genuinely happy to see you, but she also seemed to have, she was preoccupied a little bit. Like whatever she was coming from, she was also like, I need to get back to that. So she gets up quickly and she kind of exits out the door that she came through. Mm -hmm. Ooh, leaving the two of you at the Josie's hot. Nice to have a friend in town. Indeed. Yeah, especially one who can uh, <laughs> supply uh, a timber for if you wanted to get something going. Your own shop, your own lodgings, as it were. Hmm. I would need the land first, but yes. Obviously. <laughs> but <laughs> you keep playing dice and cards like that, it will come to you in no time. Uh, I do not believe dice and cards is the way to get a fortune. <laughs> but I could be wrong. <laughs> Good. <laughs> is it time? For us to venture. Ah, I'll take a look out the window for the yeah. sun. <laughs> probably about half past four. It's probably getting certainly time to reconvene or, or think about it. Close to that time, I'd say. Do you wish to win back? Uh, no, I think my luck's run out for today. I'll try again tomorrow, I believe. Very well. And actually, uh, let's make, I'll, maybe I'll make that 20 gold on this mission, <laughs> and that'll, uh, that'll make me whole again. Yes, of course. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. You guys finish your drinks, start to think about heading towards the exit. We're gonna pivot over. Further west, just beside the crook where the river splits off in multiple directions, a series of blood-curdling screams. <laughs> are spooking the horses that are trotting around Bernard's fenced-in property. So this guy who's grabbing his leg and screaming, you can tell the horses are like, just there's some like kicking up dust kind of just inside the pen there. The older man with the flowing hair and the mutton chops jogs forward with kind of hunched, heavy labored footsteps. 
and he bear hugs this writhing patient of his. The guy's holding his leg. He grabs him with one arm, covers his mouth with one hand, so the screaming stops. And with the other, he has kind of a needle that's attached to a glass vial. And inside the little glass vial is some kind of black brackish liquid. And he holds the man's mouth, and then oh. he sticks it into his neck, and the man slowly loses consciousness and then deflates into a heap on the ground. You know, um, I think we should maybe go, this is not safe safe. <laughs> and it's at this point that you get a better look at the man still standing. He's got heterochromatic eyes, the kind of big bulbous nose. I love him. <laughs> and clothes with more than their fair share of holes, many of them discolored around the edges as if eroded by a caustic substance of some kind, not torn or ripped. You thought it was just the way he was running, but now that he's stopped, you can see that his right shoulder has a pronounced hunch. It's like almost pinched up at the neck, perhaps kind of a just a developmental abnormality of some kind. And as a result, his right arm and hand are both noticeably smaller than his left. So his whole right side is like a little, just sort of shrunken smaller compared to his left limb. And he looks down at the man who just collapsed and then up at the two of you who are a few <laughs> steps removed. No business of ours. No business of ours. Have a nice day, sir. Don't. I don't suppose I could impose upon you to help me carry him back into the house. <laughs> Absolutely. Of course. Not if you're busy. No. You seem to be on your way somewhere. Oh, in fact, uh, we were on our way here. Yeah. Um... <laughs> We this is, my name is Kate, and this is my good friend. Ilian. My name's Graham. Uh, you'll hear most call me Doc or Sawbones. Not a wealth of medical knowledge within the camp, so for now the title is exclusive to me. And he's holding the, the kind of needle and the <laughs> thing in his hand, and you can see that Ilian sort of clocked <laughs> that at one point. It's just a drow poison tincture of my own making. Of course, that makes sense. Um, Something gonna... to repose the ailing or the hysterical. I'm just gonna walk over and grab the legs and sure. just not you say do so. As <laughs> you sort of bend down to do so, he goes in and he's talking to you as the two of you are, are picking up the body. <laughs> Alan here was uh, bitten by an amphisbena in the downwield. Despite my explaining it to him prior, he was quite in shock by the level of discomfort that the antivenom does its work. I don't think I've seen you around here before, and now he's walking, so he's walking backwards, <laughs> yep. and you guys are kind of walking with him. <laughs> that doesn't say much, I suppose. Uh, I keep to myself when I'm not being called to tend to others. Have you been in camp long? Oh, we, uh, we just got here today, actually. Oh, seems very nice, peaceful. Sure. Uh, this is me, and he kicks the door behind him. <laughs> door flips open, and he kind of backs up. So he backs up through the door of the apothecary, and he leads you into this very well-lit and wide-open home, a, a building that from the outside looks like it would be like at least three rooms, like a living area, mm. a kitchen, bedroom, whatever, but it's just one big open area, now laid bare before you. No pomp, no circumstance, just sort of all the essentials. There's a blanket-covered cot that's kind of stuffed into the far corner, hanging from beams overhead are all these little planters that are boasting a colorful display of horticulture. So weeds and herbs that he might be using to, you know, make some of the remedies that he uses for either potions or just cures for the, the ailments of the town as a whole. And the way the light comes in through the window, it hits the hanging plants and it casts this kind of slowly shifting display of shadows on the wall. It makes the room feel very alive, which is a nice change from the smell of You'd have to guess vomit, sweat, something vaguely metallic, just an odor of bodies here in the apothecary as you kind of come in. Over here in the rocking chair. Okay. Ah, thank you. And you, and the man slumps into the chair there. Are there lots of poisonous animals in this area, Doc? There are a few, yes. Uh, Amphispinas being one, but certainly uh, Kruthix, Griffins, Grix, all kinds. 
Oh my. All right, uh, you said you came here to see me. Let me uh, have a look at you. No obvious injuries, eyes responsive, don't look feverish. Is it a friend that you'd have me see to or something that ails you inside? Oh, I, I guess the latter. <laughs> um, you know, Feeling I- Feeling nauseous? Oh, have you been drinking? No, I, nauseous with, um, with desire for employment. <laughs> I was just curious if um, you needed any help around here with your business. I, I've been soliciting some folks, just, you know, getting the lay of the land. Never had someone inquire about an apprenticeship or employment before. Uh, despite being paid a fair sum, I wouldn't say my job is a particularly desirable one, given the often unknown afflictions I'm exposed to during treatment of minor ailments and the like. Alchemy certainly ain't foreign to me. I was schooled a bit. What is it exactly you're hoping to learn in my presence? Oh, um, all things poisons and potions and, and herbs and things. In the past, I, I've worked a lot of, um, you know, on my feet, s security type jobs, but really I'm, I'm looking more for a, a life of the mind, you know? So security just- Security making the transition to alchemy? Is yeah, I mean- An unusual I... career path. Well, there's not a lot of career paths for alchemy where I come from. True enough. As I said, I was schooled a bit in uh, Nesia. Nothing forbidden or blasphemous, mind you. But the basics of potions and compounds, sure. Uh, something specific I can show you how to do. No promises that I'm any kind of adept in my instruction. Well, at this point, I'm 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 really interested in learning um, pretty much all of it. I would say I have basically no knowledge. Ooh. All right. Did did some the interest in the more blasphemous of of alchemy practices is that is that what led you here? No, no opportunity, and uh, I'm more coming away from something than going to something, as many of us are. I would I would never wish to pry. That's all right. You say that with an air of curiosity about you. Is it is it the blasphemous that calls to you? Well, it seems that this is a, a safe space uh, <laughs> to say yes, frankly, yeah. Safe that is enough, what I suppose. I have interest in the blasphemous. So, uh, poisons and... and Maybe alchemist's fire, uh, yeah. things of that nature. Perhaps things of a more violent nature, as opposed to a healing one. But you know, I think they're really they're two sides of the same coin. You know, to to hurt and and to help, um, often in the same circumstance. I think I could learn both. Make a persuasion check with advantage. Oh! See the gears he turning in his head. A little, little, <laughs> little curiosity forming on his brow as he kind of regards you. I mean, I'd roll it twice, right? Mm -hmm. And take the large one. <laughs> it's pretty big. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, okay. Your persuasion. <laughs> 21. 21. Oh! Uh, I've said that myself on occasion. Heart and arm, <laughs> part of the same coin. I think maybe we could do a bit of experimentation if that interests you at all. Oh, absolutely, you know, whatever you have the time for. Can I ask uh, what piqued your interest in such a trade? And does your mute friend here uh, share a similar uh, interest? Oh, I think um, Ilian's maybe a little bit blood shy, you know, a little, a little squirmish so around blood shy. things of the bodily arts. You wouldn't be the first, so if you need to step outside. Uh, I'm trying to best that fear. So You're looking a little green there, my blue friend. Uh, I'm fine. All right, well, just maybe take, don't, don't throw up on me if you're gonna. And remember, we're looking for, uh, we're looking at many jobs with many people, so, you know, Take some time to really take this in. Okay. Of course, yes, yeah. Of course. Yeah, you know, I, I just got here, so I'm, I'm I'm putting my feelers out, you know, yeah. tossing my experience into the bucket, proverbially, to sure, see what the, sure. the bucket of Brunk Hollow might provide to me. 
Well, I'm not much for bucket metaphors, but <laughs> I think I know where you're coming I should, from. Yes. Uh, well, I, I would say that maybe we could work something out. Uh, right. I'd need to acquire some supplies just to okay. get us started. Yeah. Uh, there's another alchemist in town that um, has more supplies than I do, but well, maybe. Would that be Maeve? It would be Maeve. Yes, yes. yes. She's, um,. Uh, prickly, that one. <laughs> she can be, she can be, but if she can be, so there's a way to get on her good side. Uh, if, you, if you're willing to talk business with her mostly. Mm, yeah. yeah. Good to well, know. Well, perhaps, um, you know, we're actually heading towards a, a job of the more security variety, but, um. Something that's familiar. Something that's yeah. familiar, you know, make a quick buff. But, um, maybe we could trade a few lessons a week for a few hours helping you out, dragging bodies to and fro. Could do that, could do that. Are you saying we? I might go somewhere else. The royal. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I wouldn't blame you, son. You look a little pale. Me, Thank you. Me, me and the doc here, we. Me, myself, watch and it, I and the doc. Okay. Fair. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for tagging along, though. I really appreciate the moral support in the end. Do you, do you bring any experience to the table uh, on your own? Um, just things I've learned in the library, doc. Which library might that be? Oh, um, I was schooled in, in Saywall. Saywall. Good enough, good enough. University. Right. And you found in the depths of the library mentions of the blasphemous, did you? Um, here and there, yes. It, it was hard to, to research things that um, maybe had been blacked out or, or eliminated from the texts. But you tried, didn't you? Yes, I did. <laughs> You come up with anything good? I might have some thing in my back pocket. Can you watch him kind of, he, he sort of said that a little offhand and then kind of, the, again, that sort of curiosity washing over him. Anything you'd like to share with the class? <laughs> well, nothing I understand yet, but maybe with a little bit of education, I can start to connect some dots in my brain and then share the wealth with everybody. Mind if I try to connect the dots <laughs> right now? You know, the dots are, are the proverbial dots are uh, <laughs> not with us in the room at the moment. Um, they're uh, somewhere else. Do you have those on you? <laughs> I think you do, because you told them to man. Yeah, but I'm not going to show them to yeah, anybody. Yeah, that's okay. Make a deception check. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> this dog, he knows his shit. No matter how great I want Kate to be he at... Smells am I like able Erica to tell if she's stupid. lying if I... Uh, you can make an insight check. Oh, fuck. Yeah. It was a four. Deception. It's a five. It's a nat 20. <laughs> oh, boy. Nat 20, oh. let's go. That's nat 20. <laughs> nat 20, let's go. Ilian, get me out of this, I swear to God. <laughs> You got yours out of this. You can feel Kate flailing a little bit over there. You also were present when she spoke to Maeve, so already <laughs> you're, you, you didn't, you, she could have been lying then, theoretically, but yeah. I think she told Maeve she had it on her, so you get the impression that, that she might indeed. Oh, Jesus. I think we're running short on time, Kate. Oh, would you, you look at that? Going. Oh no, we have to get to the, to the, to the, to where, where we're going. To, to the, run, to the rendezvous yeah. point. <laughs> we have to get to the rendezvous point. Um, Beauty. Rendezvous for the security. For the gig. Doc, I am so looking forward to chatting more about opportunities and uh, this is really a two way street. So um, I'll, I'll be back to check in soon. Maybe uh, uh, as soon as I can. Sure, sure. Uh, sometimes I'm out and about, depending on who needs help, but uh, if it's easy enough, you could come by tomorrow, too. So uh, right. I look forward to seeing what you got, seeing if we can puzzle together uh, what's on what's on whatever you got with you. All right, well, um, no promises since, you know, hopefully nothing goes wrong uh, with our little job today, but um, right. if you don't see me tomorrow, assume I am injured and somewhere in the woods. <laughs> Well, they'll probably send me, so I'll see Perfect. you if you're dead. I Great. hope I didn't rub off on you wrong. I, I'm hoping to protect people, so if I get hurt, I hope we've maintained a good relationship at least for now, and you'll patch me up if I get hurt. Sure, sure. I don't give a shit. Okay, <laughs> all right, have a good day, Doc. Patched up fuckers I hate worse than anyone, so it <laughs> comes with the territory. All right. Nice meeting you, Doc. Nice meeting you as well. I'm just gonna like take two steps and then kind of like quick walk. Yeah, as you kind of walk out, you do get a just a 
Just a thinking kind of wondering expression from him. Uh, that curiosity morphing into one of maybe even suspicion a little bit. Oh, frick. <laughs> when the door shuts and we make it a good wake, I think Maeve is so much better. I think Maeve is so Okay, well, obviously that Maeve is the number one choice, but I mean. Safety dog. Doc, Doc isn't a bad backup. I mean, it's not a good. It's not a. Did bad you see backup. all of the plants that were hanging on the ceiling? That's clearly the mark of someone who knows things about. I could herbs. hang plants off my ceiling, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that. I know how to grow a tomato, but that's it. Well, that's pretty cool. I that's some. That is. <laughs> do you do you put tomatoes in your in your cooking? Uh, sometimes. I, uh, I haven't found a good recipe for them yet. They're kind of overbearing on what I try to prepare, but... We should start a garden. Uh, sure. Well, you'd have to find a good place for it, but, uh, and I don't know the climate yet, and I'd need to find a book about <laughs> that. But... <laughs> we'll get there. Okay. Great. Uh, yeah. Let, just don't give up on Maeve. I think she could be worked with. I know, I just... I'm a bit impatient, and... I know. Well, it's been... What? <laughs> <laughs> Five hours? Uh, yeah, five hours? <laughs> so, oh try to give it at least a day or two, perhaps. Oh, okay. If that's not too much to ask. Well, hopefully this job comes through and, and pays us what's needed so I don't have to worry about immediate employment. Are you low on funds? Um, you know, I, I don't particularly come from wealth. <laughs> I see. Well, if you ever need a loan or you're short on anything, just ask me. I'd be happy to help. Oh, my sweet blue friend. You keep calling me blue. <laughs> and uh, that's not a majorly defining trait of what I like to be. But I like it. It's like pretty like the sky. Okay, well, thank you. <laughs> I will. Thank you, Kate. That's very sweet. I'm going to tap him on the shoulder and just kind of look into his eyes for a moment. He's like, oh, you're welcome. Let's get to EO. Let's do it! Let's do it, yeah, let's do that. What? Start to make your way further east through town. And back at the- Sweating over there, Jordan? Oh my god, that was the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> back at the familiar grounds of Paramount Lodgings, Doxley has retreated to her second floor room, depositing the excess javelins acquired from Good as Gold. It's the first period since your very brief stay in Merlai that you've had some time entirely to yourself. And you don't mind taking the moment with nothing but the kind of muffled din downstairs competing with the thoughts inside your head. Your first impressions of Brunk Hollow have been varied, but one thing's for certain. This is a place of opportunity for those with the means to seize it. The growth that it's experienced in the last year alone is astonishing. It's far more established than the rumors that reached your ears in Peron. Like, you had heard about, you know, Brunk Hollow and how much it had become a town, and it already has exceeded those expectations. With the people apparently dipping their toes here into waters previously untouched for generations, such as the advanced waters of advanced alchemy, such as Gujek might be dabbling in. In the coming days, trust and connections will be everything when it comes to establishing yourselves here. And the gears are already turning in your head as to how to make that happen. So you're up in your room, store those javelins. What would you like to do? I'm going to leave the room and lock the door behind me. When you open the door up, Waiting for you outside in the hallway is none other than Guja. Oh, fucking bitch. Who stands with a look of consternation on his face. Like he, it seems like he's already regretting the conversation that he has not yet initiated. <laughs> and he's sort of standing there, sort of again, very slender for a, a, a half orc, got his silk shirt. And he looks like he's cleaned himself up a little bit now that he's had some time to himself in the room. He's sort of tucked in his clothes. He has his jacket on over the top. Tomorrow, would you escort me to see Isabella Narvos? The pleasure would be mine. She may be buying some of what I have brought. Would you like just me or would you like further company? Just you. I can do that. First thing in the morning, if you can. Sure. Downstairs? Downstairs. 
All right. Good evening. Thank you. He goes back to his room, just a few steps down the hall. Close the door. Baby steps, dog sleigh. I'm gonna go downstairs. Okay, you do so. Uh, I'm going to leave Paramount. You do so. And I'm going to head back to Good as Gold. Okay, Good as Gold. Yeah. Head across the thoroughfare and go into that little nook. You get you back, you bypass um, sort of that larger chop house, the eatery. There's another sort of saloon on your right as you pass by, and you return to Good as Gold. Mm-hmm. And as before, very little has changed. It hasn't been that long since you've last been here. Once again, yeah. the mirrors are glinting in the sun already, all the mirrors that are placed around the room. And you get a look at the Sampson brothers who are once again sitting in those kind of high chairs at, across from the desk. But both of them are very, as before, they were sort of going through their accounts and just sort of do, minding their own business. Both of them are like laser focused on something in the store. Like you're seeing them from outside as you're coming in and the two of them are like looking at something and as you go in, you look over to your right and there's a pair of goblins that seem to be shopping for supplies. You're sort of (laughs) grabbing some pickaxes, some shovels, like they're gathering things. And the Samson brothers are very sort of nervously just watching from a distance. They can see one mirror that's bouncing down that they can see one angle, another mirror. So, So every other, they have a very, very careful eye on what's happening in the corner there. And Bailey sort of sees you come in and looks very briefly over and then back to the goblins and then he talks to you while still kind of looking over at the goblins. Hello, welcome back to Goodest Gold. Always nice to see someone returning our business so promptly. A second of many exchanges we can only hope. And he's still again sort of very much focused on the goblins in the corner. Uh, Doxley's also going to position herself to watch the goblins a okay. little bit. Sure. Yeah. yeah, there's also- a couple aisles and you sort of move down one of the aisles there. You can still see the Samson brothers, but the goblins, the goblins don't regard you too much and they're very focused on gathering supplies. They seem like they're preparing for something, a bunch of pickaxes, shovels that they're putting into a little knapsack there. Mm. Like a number of mining tools of various okay. kinds. Yeah, not even looking at Samson, also looking at the goblins. Um, your eyes do not deceive. Me being the forgetful Godoyne <laughs> person that I am, I'm that. You know, when you left before, I told my brother I thought you had a look of confusion on your face, like you didn't totally understand that we used to be Samson and Samson Imports, but now we're good as gold, so I'm not surprised to see you back. Well, <laughs> I'm very relieved that I came back for the reminder. Um, I'm going to be browsing a bit, but as I do... Sure, do you is have there any... something you forgot on your first visit? Or? There is, yes. I was hoping for either some Essence of Awful or Essence of Chum. We have both of those, yes. Uh, we don't stock live bait, not really our trade, but we do have these distilled essences. Both of these very effective, depending on the creatures that you're trying to lure. Would you mind uh, specifying which is better for which creature that is in these hills, specifically in the downwields, possibly? Sure. Um, for avian creatures like griffins and peritons, I would say that the chum typically is more effective. Awful better for some of the land predators, such as bears and uh, hill giants, displacer beasts, that kind of thing. And you're looking to lure, to be specific. You're not looking to uh, keep them away, because we do have a nice selection of urines, basilisk urine, uh, girlon urine. For now, the luring, yes. Uh, Maybe back for the... Um, dispelling ones as well. Sure, well the Ophel and the Chum are both seven gold per flask, so... Uh, great. I think I'll have... And and how many ounces are... or how big are these things? Um, it's a flask, so it's okay. uh, yay big. Um, you don't have to use the whole flask, but using the whole flask, uh, that's the only really way to get it to work, so I would use the whole flask. <laughs> Got it. Um, all right then, I'll take, uh, I'll take two of the... Avians, then. Two chums. Great. Two essence of chum. That's 14 gold. Excellent. How are the goblins doing? They're still gathering things. And he, he sort of are you guys done? Uh, are, you, are you going to pay for those? Or And they sort of... Uh, still, get, still grabbing things. A couple times they, like, confer with each other to, like, maybe figure out what they what else they might need. But. Okay. Um, I'm going to stay until they have completed their transaction. Okay. Eventually, the goblins a couple times... Uh, give me a perception check as they... Uh, Grabbing your goods. 
11. 11, okay. They, they, again, they confer with each other, the goblins, a couple times. You can't hear exactly what they say, but they kind of... And then they gather maybe eight pickaxes, a number of shovels. They grab um, some boots and uh, some other pieces of equipment, some knapsacks. They take it all to the front table there. All right. And they count out the money and they give it. And the, the Samson brothers casually and reluctantly kind of guard them, but they don't seem like they're banned from this place of business. So they do a very careful count of everything that they've bought and sort of, and the goblins just take their things and they kind of skitter out the door. If I'm not mistaken, they never tried to nick anything off you. Uh, we've had a problem before, so we just try to keep a very careful eye on it. Problem specifically with goblins? I think that the goblin alliance that Broncalo has struck is a very tenuous one, and sometimes we just have to be careful. Have they ever stolen before? Uh, they've stolen some things, yes. <laughs> What is this tenuous relationship? I've never seen anything like it. Well, normally goblins don't really live in towns that are occupied by others, but Broncolo is sort of uh, an oasis in, in a place where normally the rules don't apply like they normally do. So the leaders of Broncolo, as well as uh, Fort Contrition, got together with the goblin leader, and they agreed to allow them to stay and, and frequent the places of business as long as they never uh, acquire weapons of any kind. That was the agreement. And who is the leader of these goblins? Uh, his name is Hank Honk. <laughs> and just to tell you, that is a co the conventional <laughs> goblin naming is a one syllable name followed by like a sound like most goblins are it's one syllable name and a sound of some so Hank Honk is, is the name of the goblin name. Got it, Mr. Honk. Yes, uh, Hank Honk is uh, the leader and you can find him at the goblin camp. I don't know why you'd want to go there, but you can. <laughs> well, I would imagine that these goblins have something to offer if they've been given such hospitable they do have some independent uh, diggings of their own. I think they're rather crude and simple, but that doesn't mean they have nothing of value. All right, interesting. If you go around the back of the main thoroughfare, you can find them there. He describes it to you if you bring out your maps. Ooh, oh, map bring out your map. It's uh, the three diamond, not Roman numeral three, but at the very top there, the pink diamond, uh, number three. Oh. Roman numeral three. Oh, they're three. clues, fine. Yeah, they're like, you have to go back around that, uh, like the backside of all those buildings. Is that Hong Kong specifically? or That's just... the goblin camp. That's like where presumably okay. most of the goblins are, are set up. Hmm. Okay. Wow. Goblin camp is number the three diamond. Three diamond. Yep, three diamond. It's like at the very top. Three yep, very, very top center of the page. Wow. Hong Kong. Oh. <laughs> Well, eh. Did you see where that is there? Yeah, that's number three, not Roman. Yes, not no Roman number three, no. Okay. Oh, oh geez. Cool. The beans. All right, then. Um, appreciate you doing business again. Please come back anytime. S it's Samson and... Samson and Samson. Samson and Samson. Uh, relation. Brothers. We are brothers, yes. We're brother, the brother Samson of Samson and Samson Imports. But it's gold now. It is good as gold, yes. <laughs> good as gold. Got it. I mean, we have gold, but that's not the name of it. I appreciate you walking me through it the way you do. Yes, it's, I can tell when we tell people that they sometimes don't know what to make of it. Oh, it's a, it's Have you, you've made of it now? You. I've officially made it, yeah. Okay. You still seem confused. Good day. <laughs> I'm gonna turn and I'll leave. You head out the door, and head I back into the thoroughfare. Two, two essence of chum. This campaign is gritty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Real gritty. Rough campaign. and tumble. <laughs> gritty. Okay. Uh, and I will start to head toward uh, my companions. Okay. It's at about this time that people have more or less um, reconvened in the main thoroughfare. I think you, uh, Kate and Ilian, said they were headed in the direction of excavation on demand, but to get there, you actually pass by the hotel where Doxley is sort of reconvening and also Morna and TC emerge from Lucky Heathen. So you guys are all getting back around at the about the same time. 
Oh, we see, like, we see each yes, other. Yes, you can see each other. What? Up there. What an afternoon it has been. <laughs> so exciting. Fruitful? You two find your uh, books? Let's not talk about it. Oh. 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 Not fruitful. For some people. Kate, specifically. There were no cookbooks. No. Ilian's rather torn up about it. There were no it. I wouldn't books mention even it anywhere. if I were you. Sad. She's gonna get him in a tip. No, it's fine. I actually don't care that much. He cares a lot. <laughs> I will say that there is a novel game at the Lucky Heathen. Oh. Yes, a, a Broncolo specific gambling game that I had never seen before. Did That's you win any fun. money? I did not, did but someone here did. <gasps> oh. I. Me. Oh. <laughs> I had some be- beginner's luck. Mm. How much did you make? Oh, how dare you? Is that, uh, is that rude <laughs> to say? Yeah. Oh, well then don't tell me. I wouldn't it, want to it's rude. all right, Mr. Derek. It's a little impolite, but it's oh. uh, I've made a good amount of money. With I'm it. not gonna rob you. <laughs> no, no, I am. I, I, we wouldn't be able to. Come mm. and find the stakes out for yourself next time. Sure, mm. that'd be fun. They have very badly designed glasses. Oh. Mm. Bring your own, perhaps. Uh, well, I doubt that I don't they would think like they that. will allow that. <laughs> but watch yourself at the tables. They can be uh, slippery. I had a mm. little accident myself. Mm. Was, uh, but it was fruitful or not, I cannot tell. <laughs> we got to know some people. Uh, well, I got to know some people. That was nice. There's no library. That's pretty much all you need to know. All right. Well. But maybe we could start one. Um, I'm not a big reader. Oh. We'll talk amongst ourselves. I've only read three books. I don't know if I'm qualified to start a whole library. Mm. This is a town where people have new beginnings. That's fair. Shall we to EOD? Sure. Uh, did you find good stuff? Did you get your javelins? Did, did you get my dagger? Or did you find a good one? <laughs> Brother, I forgot entirely. I have, I have lost. If, if, if you walk in, to this place <laughs> and retain any sort of memory of what you came in there for. Why? Good on you. Wow. Why? Well, the, the the keepers of it are extraordinary people, but they are very focused on what the name of the building is called, and they will not let your mind rest and wander the shelves for inventory. They'll just keep explaining the name of the Godwain building. Oh, what's See, the name? Uh, what is it? It was the one written by the Samson brothers. That's what uh, was yes. told to us, right, Mr. And, Warren said. And one name is not accurate anymore, and I'm already forgotten. Good as which gold. It is. Good as gold. It's not it's good, good as gold, gold anymore. It's Samson and Samson. I believe oh, you have that backwards, Samson. my friend. <laughs> and a familiar feeling creeps over <laughs> Ilian of his sister trying to talk her way out of forgetting to do something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, the dagger was probably I, overpriced anyway. I, do. I don't even need it. I apologize. Yes. I will. If it would fig- make you feel more safe. I've got a short sword that you could borrow on this little mission of ours. No, I have my I have my great sword. It's just something smaller. Uh, during our last thing, I had to jump on our wagon and get it out. It would have been nice to have a little thing to have. But it's fine. No, really, it's fine. It's not. My short sword. It's not pretty, a big deal. It's pretty fine. little. <laughs> Take his short a little sword. Guy. You, sure, I'll take your short sword. Take it. Can take. I have it with the scabbard as well? And TC kind of <laughs> does this <laughs> like opens his coat a little bit and like <laughs> it probably won't see any use. But uh, thank you for entrusting me with. Uh, does it look well made? It, it, not you know the finest, but it's 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 not junk. Well, if. Dire straits happen, and I have to use it. It will be nice. Hmm. It's hoping. Wrap it on. <laughs> All right. So excavation on demand. Let us away. All right. As we're walking, I'll give a little tug on Ilian's shirt just to imply to you know have a step or two behind. Yeah, fall a few steps removed from the main group. And in what fucking language am I picking? Oh my god. Awkward. Speak a lot of What is what? going on? Out there? <laughs> you, guys, you guys would be aware that that yeah. sea elves speak Aquan. So. It's is it a form of Elvish or it's its own? No. Totally its own. It's thing. its own language. Yeah. Wow. 
You've got, uh, you've got, you've got heels on you, Hill. I've very little, but I do. You're rested? I am. I'm ready for anything. Another cleric, even. Good. I have a feeling it's not going to be as simple as blowing a whistle. That's it. Okay. I don't remember if they said there was going to be anybody else, or if it's we five, mostly. Oh. I believe Bassett said he was relieved of having to find more when we agreed mm. to do it. Maybe we will be it. We'll see soon enough. Apparently there are dangerous beasts in the downwheel. I mm. heard about I've that I've heard as well. about that. Amphasbina. Am- Amphasbina? Amphasbina. Amphasbina. It's a uh, venomous something. I didn't ask what it was. You would know what that is. It's a two-headed snake. Oh, it's a snake that has a head on both ends. Ah, so apparently those are in the downwheel and then a bunch of other stuff I didn't catch. Cruthix? Cruthix? I'm mm-hmm. gonna pull this uh, flyer out and, oh. and mm-hmm. say, um, I came across this advertisement for the Brunk Hollow Merc Hall. It says good pay and low risk, but on the same line it says wages paid to a third party in the event of death, <laughs> which does not seem to me to be low risk, well, but it does impl- the woman was hollering about driving beasts from the downwheel, mm. so I do think that uh, it may be something to be aware of. Mm. Thank you. I mean, even walking can be dangerous under the right circumstances, but, so I'm not saying that necessarily this risk entails everything. There's always going to be a risk. They're probably covering their backs with liability or something like that. TC, give me a perception check. I was gonna ask, wh- where did you put that note away? In my breastplate. Okay. <laughs> uh, perception. You're gonna, mm-hmm. you gonna try to slide um, a hand out, my guy? Maybe. <laughs> uh, perception <laughs> was twenty three. Twenty three. Oh, shit. Just as she took it out very briefly, she was walking side by side with you, and she kept it to herself. Mm-hmm. But you were able to read the last line on it too, which says. It says. <laughs> Give it to me. We'll put dinner on the table if you provide the spice. We'll put dinner on the table if you provide the spice, and it's thieves can't. Hidden in plain sight. Oh, wow. fuck. And Don't tell anyone. Don't say it. Oh, 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 you bitch. <laughs> it, it's basically the, the Merc Hall is, it's calling for someone for a, a clandestine job without making that known to everyone. They're looking for someone to perform a duty that is not uh, what? Just putting out into the open. It's code. Thieves can. Yes. <laughs> That's so cool. Very cool. That's super cool. Very cool. <laughs> All right. That is delicious. All right. So, but look at what just um, you put it away. You said that. <laughs> you said where it was. Um, <laughs> oh he just stopped like, in the middle of the screen. Because I see what this is about, girl. So cool. I'm so cool. Everything's cool. Um, <laughs> Uh, uh, well, it doesn't sound that different from the job that we're on right now. Maybe that could be a good follow-up. Uh, perhaps. Oops, sorry. <laughs> and, and we are just blowing whistles, right? We're not throwing ourselves into an, an, an unnecessary battle. I, I will remind ourselves not. we had an experience like that earlier as a group when we first met. Yes. Perhaps we don't want to... Let's just speak with Bison. I'm sure he would fill us in on everything we need to know. I was going to say, however this ends up, I think it'll be more of a lesson on the word and intentions of both Bison and the hotelier who set us on this path. Very well. Let's kind of see hope. if they uh, are true to their word. Kind of hope something goes a little awry, because you could, hope something I, I goes awry. I knew you would say that. Hear me out. Alien. Hear me out. I just because <laughs> people are aware that we've been in town, that we got away from a cleric. If then something happens and we resolve it, that's two things in the same day that we <gasps> could be. And we would have present. eyes on us even more scrutiny. It really feels are like you you're a, trying to pick a fight, my blue friend. Are you, okay, <laughs> are you afraid of notoriety? Do you not want to be well known in these parts? Perhaps some of us would like to keep a lower profile. Just or keep our heads. We just got here. Let's just go talk to Bison. <laughs> I'm gonna lean over to Morna, like maybe like like take a step back as the rest of them are walking the forward. Side. They can see you doing that. They yeah, can, they won't be able to hear you, but they can I'll see just you. Just be like, on the side. if we get into trouble, yeah, 
I'm probably gonna run. Okay, me too. Great, good plan. I can't be fist bump. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> is he looking for a scrap? It really feels like that, doesn't it? You spent all day with him. Is he? You know, I really like him, <laughs> but I just think mind. he's got a lot of energy. You know, he does seem. She keeps calling me blue. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed that. That's no. a weird thing to address someone as. Yeah, I don't know. Night. I do like him, but I just, you know, I think that maybe he's looking for guts and glory. Mm. So perhaps better to keep a wide berth. Yeah. I think it's good. Do you see, you'll be like, <laughs> and you see the balance on the short sword is best. If you, <laughs> you wield it like this, and, and he'll be just little showing, finesse. Yeah, yeah uh, quite the master. Showing quite all the, the different master. niceties of He's, the sword. Uh, honestly, as he's doing it, he's more, like, you had a sense that he was dexterous, but he's quite dexterous. Like, he's a little portly. He's not sort of as. I'm sorry, me? Yes, TC. Okay. He's not as sort of fit and lean as some of your other companions, so his level of dexterity is actually. Not only impressive, it's a little disarming. Like that works to his advantage. That he he doesn't he doesn't look the way he's actually sort of his skill set. Like. While you're doing that, I want to be like, you know so much. Tell me more. I I want to hear more about this. How about do you wield this, this weapon? About well, this short sword. This is great. I think. Yeah. I, I've Could shown I shown you what here, it can do? I'm gonna hand it to you, and can you show me like a nice thrust? How you do that? That's great. <laughs> Someone who can wield a great axe. Just a great sword. Oh. Well, I could do a great axe too. Forgive me. Uh, exactly. More. Think about more of the point of it than the side. It's very insightful. I will keep that in mind. Thank you, TC. Thank you. <laughs> Even without assistance or direction, Excavation on Demand is the kind of place that would not take long for you to discover on your own. It is the largest building by far in this main section of town. It's got a steady stream of coming and going of carts and wagons that put Bernard's boarding to shame, all of the carts coming in and out of here. In almost robotic symmetry, a pack of miners and prospectors will emerge from the building just as another is arriving. So sort of switching places, the latter caked with dirt and sweat after returning from some undoubtedly lucrative dig at the hills. Each group and the wagons are escorted by and carefully observed by at minimum two to three guards, armed guards, outfitted beyond the usual trappings of personal <laughs> protection, not just like a simple sword or something. They're armored, they, they have like full armor on, some of them more so than others, but ranged weapon, melee weapon, they're head to toe very much in the business of security. This is an operation that takes its mining very seriously and it takes protection of said mining resources just as seriously. The expressions on the miners' faces sometimes read as exhaustion or sort of toiled exertion, but also as accomplishment and satisfaction. And some of them are already motioning to their friends and motioning to grab a drink or head over to the card tables. And the forward presenting message here at EOD, even to a ca casual observer, is very simple. Work hard, get paid, work hard again tomorrow. And the people here, again, they you get no impression at all that Bison is like grinding his workers to the bone. They're working hard, but they're, they seem to be happy to do so. It, you imagine that it's decently lucrative if he has you know claims of, of the biggest variety in the hills. So all the workers here seem focused and, and ready. And as soon as they sort of trade in their picks and carts and shovels, they start to kind of brush off their hands and head right for one of the taverns or the Lucky Heathen. You watch them kind of streaming down the thoroughfare in that direction. And with everyone so focused on their tasks, there isn't an obvious candidate for who's supposed to be filling you in on your scouting assignment until you spot someone who seems to be twirling a whistle mm -hmm. attached to a length of twine, kind of back and forth around their fingers. They do one circle and then they kind of throw it back the other way. She's a human woman with dark skin and her hair pulled back into a long, tight braid. And she carries with her a diverse assortment of weapons, a whip and scimitar clipped to her belt on opposite sides, a blade in a sheath by her boot, a short bow on her back, and three more throwing knives tucked into compartments on her padded gambeson. And while watching the wagons come and go, she'll occasionally make a comment to one of the laborers of the guards, sharing a laugh, sort of remarking on the day's haul, whether or not you know they're satisfied with what they've brought in. It's very obvious that she has a rapport with many of them. And if anyone looks like they've been entrusted by Bison with additional responsibilities, it seems to be her. 
and that's where we're gonna take a break. Ah. Ah. So you guys are about to get your assignment, perhaps, from one of Bison's deployments. So you're getting the first taste of the expansiveness of this mining operation. I mean, the place mm. is churning, it's loud here. People are pulling in these carts into this big sort of open warehouse kind of area, dumping the contents, and other people are kind of going through, keeping track of what's being coming and going. So, so cool. the place That's itself really cool. is, is humming with activity, even at this kind of later hour in the day. So you get the very sort of a first taste of, of what it's like here with some of these prospectors and miners. So that is where we'll pick it up. Thank you right. guys. Holy moly. Oh my god, you got so much gold. I can't. Uh, what that in the. the <laughs> Drink some more now. I really did. You, wow. took, you took like 13 of my gold and you were like, I'll buy you a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing over here. <laughs> Goodness. Oh, she played you, man. Yeah, she, she fucking did. played you. <laughs> I don't want to get moved. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll pick it up right there when we come back. Thank you guys so much for joining us, and um, we'll see what uh, the downwield has to offer us when we come back. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going. Fight. Oh, sorry. Yes, <laughs> yes, hopefully the biggest <laughs> fight, fight of our night. lives. <laughs> uh, TikTok, we're gonna be taking a 15 minute break. We'll come back live then. We're just gonna go offline for the break. At Twitch, we've got puzzles. We've got more little fun videos yeah. for you. We got it all. Baby. Enjoy the break yeah. stuff. Once again, we, they, we're gonna be adding some new stuff. It's not there yet, but some Brunk Hollow themed puzzles to come. All right, everybody, we'll see you on the other side. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. We hope you had a wonderful break. Um, <laughs> stretch your legs, go to the bathroom. Um, we're gonna dive back <laughs> in. Um, we are just about to meet our contact at Excavation On Demand and see what they have waiting for us in the downwield. But before we do... Before we do, here we go. And Wizard Inc. gave 500 bits. Uh, Jay Brownie did 1,000 bits. Crazy Logic gave it to us. Uh, Murdoch did 100 bits. Ali Slater did 100 bits. Raw Knight gave five commu 15 community subs. Thank you so much. Oh my, oh my god, everybody. Ali Slayer, we subscribe. Uh, Murdoch did uh, 100 bits. Uh, oh, Corporate Crush Course. I'm so sorry, you rated us. Hello. Oh, that was hello. Quite hello. some time ago. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you. Uh, J Bomb subscribed. Legit Aaron gifted a sub. Solitaire, we subscribed. Crazy Locha gifted a sub. Murdoch, another 100 bits. K Von Clay, we subscribed. Hello and welcome. Uh, Cheesy Quesadillas gave out five community subs. Thank, thank you, you so very much. Oh, and Roan KT, we subscribed. Thank you very, very much, thank everyone. You. Yes. You guys are going to be filthy with Samson and Samson. Really? Oh, oh. Yeah, I didn't look at it. Um, we have thank to pay you for all it. Very much. But, we yeah, still have to pay for it. Thank you, thank you. Forgot about that. Thank you. <clears throat> So we return to just um, maybe 50, 60 feet removed from the comings and goings of excavation on demand. You guys have not yet approached the woman who's twiddling the whistle around her fingers, so you have a moment here to say something or approach. That is up to you. He seems well armed for this. It's pretty supposedly cool. Supposedly not getting into a fight mission. It could just be for show. Or precaution. Yeah. I suppose we engage. With precaution as well. <laughs> True. <laughs> well, uh, <coughs> any last any last checks you need before we get going? Mm. Let's do it. Remember to not go for my short sword. <laughs> I, you can have it back if you really need it. Mm. Eventually, just okay. hang on to it. For he now. offered you a short sword, Ilian. He probably is concerned for your safety. True. Sure. Should be. I am. Let's just go. Right yeah. <laughs> as you guys are approaching, immediately, she, as you saw, she, she had a rapport with a number of the miners and, and the guards and things. As you guys are approaching, immediately she can tell these are not people that work at Excavation On Demand. She doesn't recognize your faces. She sort of straightens up and catches the whistle in her hand that she had been kind of spinning around. Flea bags fresh from the Civil Road. Bassett said he had the right people, having not embarrassed themselves up against Mr. Boyd and his boys. Mm. I take it that be you. You heard about that, did you? <laughs> Everyone did by now, I think. Hmm. Cleric being in the cusp ain't a uh, secret to people in Brunkhaw. And Boyd being a pain in everyone's ass is also doesn't seem like a secret either. No, that ain't a secret either. Hmm. Anyone ever try to take care of this, Horton? Sure. 
I think Horton's got some uh, pull with the clinkers. So uh, there's a bit of a conflict of interest when it comes to hunting him down. So no bounty on that head. Yeah, not from us, anyway. Bad optics, see? Anyway, welcome to Bronk Hollow. Thank you very much. How do you do? Pleasantries, pleasantries. Yes. Spare you having that conversation for the 50th time today. Folk in town always curious when the new arrivals roll in. What did Mr. Clemens already tell you? We need to blow some whistles for Mr. Bison if things start to go down. That's pretty much it. That's right. That's uh, about... Also not to ask him about his name change. Yeah, I wouldn't talk to him about that if you can avoid it. Here's the long and short of it. Team happened upon a rich find at the dig, but a couple of clinker scouts were in the area. They do always seem to be lurking when you least want them around. Right. They reported back, and now the warden's making a case that the dig lies partially on land owned by Fort Contrition. Might be true, might be not. Anyway, Bison's not likely to give it up. So there's negotiating and some assaying going on. But while that happens, he don't want to be set upon by clinker reinforcements coming up through the hills, which is where you come in. Men and women of Bison's workforce are pretty well known at this point. We could risk it if we had to, but unfamiliar faces do the job best. That way, if you're found by clinkers, you have the benefit of honest deniability. You just say we're out prospecting or whatever the fuck you want to say. Doesn't matter to me. I'm gonna give you directions to a ridge that has a nice view of a popular trail running through the downwheel. If the weather holds clear, you'll be able to see the dig site from there too, but only just, it'll be off in the distance. You see anyone wearing green and gray and making their way along those trails, you give the whistle a blow and she holds up the whistle in her hand, sort of a long with a couple uh, holes carved into it. And she holds that up. It don't mean violence is going to break out for certain, but it gives Bison the heads up that he needs. If it sounds easy, it's because it probably will be. Don't get yourself into a fight that don't belong to you. Bison ain't asking for that. In a couple of hours, someone will come get your report and you'll be relieved. Might be me if I can finish getting these carts offloaded. The only real danger I can see is the usual hazards of the downwheel. Bears, cricks, griffins, you might have heard at this point. Briar bushes, thorny vines, you keep your wits about you and don't make an unnecessary racket, I think you should be fine. Any reason to believe that they wouldn't be wearing their usual attire to try to hide away from prying eyes? I suppose it's possible, but when they're assaying claims, they tend to wear uniforms. And if they're sending somebody, I don't think they'd presume to be subtle about it. I think they want to make a show of force, maybe try and push Bison into a deal he don't want to make. If they ain't wearing gray and green, don't blow the whistle. Hmm. Okay. And what is your name, ma'am? My name is Delia Croy, and I work for Mr. Bison as you are today in this very specific instance as well. He'll be at the meeting, I presume. He will be. I doubt you'll be able to see him from your vantage point, but welcome to take a look. Mm. Who shall I pass this off to? I'll reach your hand out. First hand, she hands over the whistle. It's very light in your hand. Do a similar twirl to what she did. Just, sort of <laughs> Just be careful with it, don't break it. We get it back when we come to get your report. Pretty much that simple. Anyone have any questions? If there's only one whistle, why are there five of us? Well, just in case all of y'all don't make it. Like I said, there are dangers, the usual ones. But if somebody falls ill or gets injured and somebody has to escort them back to camp, well, that's two people already counted out. It's easy to lose people in the downwind. Understood. Now, what about um, some of these wild animals? If we were to spot them making their way towards the plane. Um, Bison and the uh, soldiers from Fort Contrition will be adequately prepared for bestial threats. I wouldn't worry about that. But again, no whistle. No whistle. Only gray and green. Green and gray. Green and gray. Okay. Sounds easy enough. Um, is there any way we could uh, impart numbers? One tote for 
five or less, two toots for more than five. You just take that whistle in your hand and you blow. It is for the dogs, Mr. Welk. I'm sorry? The, it is for the dogs. Ah, the, yeah. dogs the dogs are well trained, but unlikely to distinguish between one and two blows of the whistle. I recall that now. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Croy, thank you. Was there a question you had? Not at all. Well, thank you then. All right, you head east out of camp along Detention Pass, and you take the first left that the road offers you. Follow that trail for a bit as the forest gets thicker, and at a point you'll meet up with the bend of a little brook trickling down from the hills. From here, the trail starts to turn, but you should keep heading straight, straight at the brook. You just keep that angle, you keep walking. You dip into a little gully, and on the opposite side is a rocky ascent. It's maybe 90, 100 feet up. You go around the left side, it's plenty hikeable. You don't have to scale any mountains, nothing like that. Now the gully that you pass through on the way to get to that rocky ascent is what we'd have you keep an eye on. That gully, Bison's Dig is to the west, and the clinkers would be coming from the east. The gully is the easiest way to get from A to B especially if they got horses or wagons. It's one of the only clear paths that you could pull a cart through. Ridge provides a good vantage point on anyone looking to close that distance. And that's it. No problem. Is there any problem if we head right now? Do you need anything else from us? I would hope you would be heading right now. Bison's already up at the dig, so I imagine negotiations have started. Um, are you the woman we'll see when it becomes time to get paid? Should we all make it back down in one piece? That is the plan, yeah. See you soon. Good luck, be safe. Thanks for your help. I'm gonna tilt my hat. Welcome to Bronk Hollow. She turns her attention back toward the goings on at Excavation on a Man, helps to start to help unload some of the carts that have pulled into that warehouse. East then? East. All right. Uh, <laughs> as we start walking, Start walking, I yep. imagine. Uh, so does anyone have a spyglass on something that can see at long distance? No. No. I'm gonna, whoever's closest to me, I'm gonna hand off the whistle. I'm gonna make the okay. quickest stop I possibly can at Goodit's Goal. I will see you on that path east. Very well. And All right. It, 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 maybe not in, after we've walked a little while and maybe gone around at least one building. Um, Before you do that. Yeah. I will tell you ahead of time, spyglasses are very expensive. Oh, the, the, the lenses necessary for them, like that's a luxury item for uh, for like a, your average person. Yeah. They can be hundred, like a oh. hundred gold for, for the lenses. For a decent <laughs> one. I mean, you could get one that just like does a little, if you yeah, want one with yeah. decent nice magnification to it. You want the whistle back? Very expensive. That she, kind of that kind of glass work is rare. Yeah. For you know what? I see just fine. All right. Checks her perception. Yeah. <laughs> now that I think of it, it'd probably be a... Not great. An imported... I didn't say I saw a great, just that I saw fine. An imported spyglass might be out of my reach at the moment. Never mind. Here's the whistle back. I oh. wouldn't want to rob you of your job. We're, we're starting to walk now at yeah. this point, right? Heading towards the east end of town, yeah. Mm -hmm. Have any of you worked security-type jobs like this before? Sure. Give or take, maybe. Depends. I'd call this less security and more scouting. scouting. Vantage. I've done that before, I suppose. All right. Have you? Security type. Mm -hmm. Probably less scouting. <laughs> Keep your head low. Be patient. That's all. Keep your eyes on the brush. There's snakes and all sorts of. Seems that way. Don't pick fights. Fauna. Hmm. If there's a fight to pick, and we need to fight, that's important to know that we need to jump into it. We were just told that they're going to be so far away we won't even recognize Not for them. There. Not for them. If another danger pops up, it's okay to fight. Be ready for one if it needs to happen. Without moving my head, I'm gonna like use my eyeballs to make eye contact with <laughs> Fauna. <laughs> <clears throat> For someone who's worked in security before, you seem awfully squeamish to have a fight. I don't know. Squeamish maybe not the right word, but not looking to get myself into any more trouble here. 
not interested in the physical, dangerous lifestyle anymore. Looking for a change of occupation? Yeah, honestly, yeah. I'd say for myself, at least, we've been given pretty strict instructions, and wavering from them is not going to get us on the list for the next one. That's all I'll say. Surprisingly sound point from TC. <laughs> Twilling. <laughs> the way out of the camp to the east is more densely forested than the path that you took coming in. But there's a decently wide trail that's been carved out, and it's even been sprinkled with crushed gravel for ease of travel. Oh, thanks. You've gathered that the relations between Brunkhollow and Fort Contrition aren't always amicable, but like it or not, these two communities are very much linked for the foreseeable future. So they do have this kind of, this road that they call Detention Pass between Roncalo and Fort Contrition that people clearly make this journey multiple times, quite often. The woods themselves are, at this juncture, fairly unremarkable, but you're currently experiencing a little bit of a butterflies in your stomach feeling that you imagine has afflicted many who come here, who have come here before you. It's a sense of a place that feels so untamed <laughs> and untethered from the constraints of the divine, where magic could be lurking around every corner, even if most of the time it's not. Just that briefest of possibilities that you're somewhere where the rules, the previous rules simply do not apply here. So you get that feeling just kind of in your gut as you're moving through. It isn't long before you can see the point up ahead where the path splits off to the left. So off of this main gravel course, there's a splitting off to the left. But there's already something that captures your attention before you get there. Everybody give me perception checks. Mm. Ooh, 18. 11. 16. 26. Nice. Whoa. Wow. It's TC and Doxley sort of marching ahead at the front that get the best look at what is coming in your direction. There seems to be a shorter, green-skinned figure running as fast as his stunted legs will carry him in your direction. And he's running away from another person mm. uh. on horseback who's quickly closing the gap. At first, it was kind of just a, a cloudy dust. The horse was kicking up a lot of dust along this gravelly trail. But you can clearly see the figure of the horse and the person that's riding it bearing down. The rider has a uniformly gray jacket and pants with dark green accents on the neck, the wrists, and the ankles. <clears throat> it's fast and doesn't hesitate after getting in range to lift a crossbow and pulls the horse up, fires, and the goblin gets struck on the back of the left shoulder and kind of collapses into the dirt there. And he's sort of sort of pulling not, at the arrow. Not dead. Back. Definitely not okay. dead, no. All right. Um, actually, I'll say with your perception check, the just the way that the person kind of aimed it seemed like they weren't shooting to kill okay. specifically. Like they were very much shooting to disable rather than okay. kill, rather yeah. than making a kill shot. So the rider then after landing the blow, puts the crossbow back and starts to ride up. So the goblin is probably 60 feet from you guys. And then the rider's now quickly closing the gap behind that. Is there anything you want to do in this moment? Did we all, did, we, did I see that too? You can now see the activity. Okay. You, uh, we'll say Doxley and, um, TC were the only ones so far that noticed the uniform on the rider, so you very mm -hmm. clearly see the, the the colors of Fort Contrition that you guys were able to see. All quickly, Clinker versus Goblin coming up here. Not our fucking problem. Blow the whistle? No, no, that's in the gully. That's not anywhere near here yet. In fact, we should probably not be made it known where we're headed at all. Can I mask of the wild right now? Oh, does that like a um the, to hide is yeah. what you're trying to do? If you were to retreat off the road and into the tree line, oh, okay, maybe it's not high stakes enough for that. Yet. Okay, yeah, <laughs> uh, it's, it's pretty conceivable that they've seen. Uh, even if he's kind of concentrating on the goblin, it's conceivable that he definitely that there's people this. on the road. He might not have seen how exactly how many or yeah, like okay. he probably not caught your faces, but yeah, you can see that there's people ahead of him on okay. the road. Definitely, yeah. great. So the rider continues. Should we hide? There's nothing to hide no. for. We just keep going. A cloud of dust kicking up, and he shouts. Mm -hmm. And at first, you're not sure if he's addressing you, but he's not. He seems like he's shouting to the goblin there on the ground. Stop where you are, Mungbean, or I'll put you down for good. And he has the crossbow kind of out again. And as he's got the crossbow trained, 
gets himself off the saddle and then gets down to the ground and he starts to slowly approach, sort of walking closer and closer. And he looks up to see the rest of you, still a little bit away. Should we be on our guard here of some larger fight happening? Caught red-handed trying to lift weapons from the external armory. Clever little shits burrowed in from underneath, but the dogs sniffed them out before they could escape. Just what we need, huh? A pack of well-armed goblins traipsing about. And he goes back to his tension to the goblin. You know, your leader in his negotiations with Broncolo and Fort Contrition agreed to forego weapons so you might be momented a life here. Might want to think about that, about how going back on your word will affect your people's livelihoods. And he comes down and he kind of grabs the goblin by the scruff of the neck and pulls him up to his feet and he's still ah, ah, like pulling at the arrow in his shoulder. Mm -hmm. And he sort of takes out sort of like a long length of twine. He looks like he's kind of about to tie him up in some regard. I'm just gonna walk past him. Continue to walk. Making him a rest in the wild. Does that happen often out here? It does when there's thefts. Mm -hmm. He won't be sent to the prison, but he'll be dealt with by us. Sorry for the inconvenience. I'll take him back now, see what the warden has to say. I don't know. Should we keep our eyes out for more of these uh, mung beans out in the wild? As far as we can tell, we got the other ones already. Like I said, there was them burrowing into the armory. Three of them we captured right away. This one managed to get away. I'll chase him down. We're bringing him back. Do I recognize this goblin as one that was in Samson and Samson? No, it's definitely not that one. <clears throat> that, that would be, given the time frame, that would just also be, yeah. Oh, so the ones that bought those tools possibly didn't use it for this purpose. Oh, almost definitely. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was saying that this would like happen. Yeah, that they've been okay. burrowing, you know, trying to make a little hole and up underneath the armor or whatever. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah, so he pulls in. <clears throat> I'm gonna follow Ilian and just kind of start walking past. Oh, good luck. Good day. Pulls the goblin and he sort of, he grabs the arrow that's embedded in the goblin's shoulder to like pull on it to get the goblin to go up on the horse. He's like, get up there, mung bean. And, ah! The goblin gets up on the horse there. Did it seem <clears throat> true specifically that there's not more goblins out here getting hunted? Mm, give me an insight, yeah. Are goblins, would I have encountered goblins like back in Saywall? Uh, in Saywall, yes. They would have had very much their own sectioned off community. Okay. That was, you might see them, but they were they would not be allowed in like regular places of business. Yeah, they would have their own little like economy and, and set up. Nine. Nine, yeah, difficult to tell. I mean, if that's necessarily true or not. And it's unlikely that we would have sympathetic views on goblins. Probably, yeah. Search yourself, Deirdre. <laughs> <laughs> Give yourself an They e definitely e have. Deirdre. Systemic racism is <laughs> bad for the goblin, but me, Morna, I'm trying to figure out in game how racist I am against yes. goblins. They <laughs> have a negative reputation as a whole. I mean, they, they take what they want. They're known as raiders and pillagers, so they're dangerous creatures and uh, they don't typically abide by sort of Civilized rules, whatever that means, but um, but again, so even more significant that there is this deal. Yes. Yes, that is that is an unusual yeah. deal for sure. That, that that they're very much allowed to sort of be in places of business. So, uh, yeah, I'm also going to walk on. Uh, right. He gets back up on the horse with the goblin, and <coughs> Alien's gonna look back and just clock how easy it might have been for a sword to hit that guy. Just just like <laughs> like. How easy that would have been. Uh, the outfit that he had on was not like armor. It was like a uniform. So okay. easy. Cool. <laughs> a sword would have very easily pierced the exterior of that armor. Cool. I'll just keep walking. <laughs> I, I get it. Um, he, he turned. Yeah. I could have taken it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, thought, I won't. I could have. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, no. I could have stabbed <laughs> that guy. Um, no, that was more of a private. More of a private. <laughs> as yeah, as we keep moving here, as well, let's only hope that there's not more hunting parties out here. Does it seem unfair that the goblins aren't allowed to have weapons, and everyone much, else is? I don't know how much time you spent with goblins, but uh, the, the, they they congregate in large numbers. Having a bunch of goblins running around with weapons, I mean. Are we congregating in large numbers? It's a community. I suppose. 
There's a, there's a tenuous deal going on. I'm, I'm quite surprised. It seems like even radical places have their limits. If it's true that these goblins were get, trying to illicitly gather weapons against some kind of a treaty? Well, I'm questioning the idea of the treaty in the first place. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> 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 oh, wait, I, Morna, I, we saw a goblin being uh, treated quite harshly in the, uh, in the street earlier. That was me, actually. I, I did not see the goblin. <laughs> no, no. Uh, when you guys first yeah. left the hotel, you saw at the market. But it's those two. Oh, oh that, that was the two of you. Sorry. Yep, you're right. I. <laughs> All women look the same. To I, 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 listen, <laughs> our, our trip varied. Our trip to the to the to the gambling tables just uh, cemented. It is all right. Uh, uh, in my mind, Doxley, you and I saw a goblin being mistreated. Yes. But he also seemed like he was setting up his wares in the local market. So well accepted by most. If it were up to me, no one would have a weapon except me, so I can't really have an opinion on it. Fair. Was that Is a joke, right? Doxley? Because that was kind of funny. No, I, I really don't think she was joking. Not funny. Oh, well, it was funny. Oh. Should I disarm? Sure, yeah. Go ahead. I'll take another one. He'll take it. <laughs> Please. I'm just kidding. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll fuck this up for all of us. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Let's go. I'll blow your 20 gold ready. <laughs> <laughs> the group continues on. And once you've left the main thrust of Detention Pass, you have some uneventful time spent that's kind of walking north, no longer on that gravel trail between the, the two main settlements here in the valley. As you're heading slowly up out of Brunkhala Valley, the incline isn't doing your legs any favors. It's a different kind of discomfort from the bumpy ride of Baker's carriages during your approach through the cusp. You see a few of those tawny magpies darting from branch to branch, and you wonder what else the downwheeled and upwheeled have to show you that you wouldn't normally see in the areas around your home cities. Undoubtedly a mixture of the fascinating and the ferocious. So far, the instructions you were given have been very straightforward, very easy to follow. And the next step for you to keep your eyes and ears peeled for are signs of this winding brook that you're meant to continue on and bypass on your way to the gully. So there's a little bit of quiet walking time here. You've very much at this point been kind of swallowed up by the wilderness around you. You haven't, unlike the trail where people were coming and going a little bit, it's very quiet here. You're alone you're in the wilds. You're not, you're not in what would people would call the downwheel yet once you get up out of the valley that's when you're in the town uh two things yes. um first i want to as we're going here keep an ear out and an eye out for horses and goblins and sure. tracks and things okay. um and second obviously the cusp hasn't come up at all in terms of it. like the we we would understand that the, the dig would be still well within Cusp. Oh, it would be within the, not even within the cusp, it would be within what they know to be safe. Okay. The cusp is also, if you think of Runcolo kind of up in the corner of a map, mm -hmm. the cusp is more like an, uh, a half of a, like, like an arc, okay. not a circle around Runcolo. Ah. Because where all the main cities are, like there probably is a cusp on the other side, but oh, people but... don't know where that is because oh. people don't really come from there. People mm -hmm. come okay. from oh, okay. the south and the west. They don't so from the north. expansion is kind of going out. Yes, that it's way. pushing further and further out, and people don't know exactly where those limits are. Yeah. But presumably, it extends decently far because they've done mining operations yeah. in the downwheel and the upwheel, and right. haven't noticed that the gods are present. Yeah. So, so a decent stretch of land. There. It's not like we're going to take a, a wrong turn and be like, oh, <laughs> and be like, oh, we're in the cusp. Third <laughs> <laughs> down. Finger in the cusp. Yeah, yeah. Finger in the cusp. I'm fingering the cusp. I'm fingering the cusp. Oh, see, my finger, finger is in the cusp. Finger. Oh. <laughs> so. <laughs> Just looking out for tracks and, uh, and listening for a little goblin. Give me a perception check. Uh, 19. 19. You don't hear noises, but in the dirt in a couple of places, especially where some of the soil is softer, are very small footprints that might belong to something goblin-sized. 
both coming and going in the direction that you are generally heading in. Some of them kind of peeling off, but yeah, every once in a while, like near a tree where some of the roots are, you'll see a little indented footprint there, sort of about goblins. And more so than I'm seeing horse tracks and, and human tracks. Yeah, yeah human very, tracks. like almost no horse tracks here yeah. because it's it's rather overgrown here. I mean, you could ride a horse through here, it'd be a little difficult. You see some footsteps definitely, but also a few little goblin tracks. Okay. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if we see another couple small green fellows out here. I've noticed a number of goblin tracks by the trees here. If no, they do, that shouldn't shadow. be a problem. We don't have any business with them, nor are they us. Just saying, if, if there are still clinkers out here looking for them. I see. No other tracks of any kind? Not that I know. That was the most significant. All right. You guys continue on. Mm -hmm. A little more walking, mm -hmm. about maybe 30 minutes of kind of travel, sort of lightly upward travel. You're working up a bit of a sweat there. You can feel, every time the breeze kind of blows, you can feel that sort of cooling your neck and the back of your, your back of your head with the sweat. Wow. Happy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dab a little bit. <laughs> Eventually, all of you start to pick up on sound of water flowing, just a quiet, nothing quite like the Broncolo Creek that has a sort of good volume moving through it, a, a quiet kind of trickle coming from up ahead, signs that you might be approaching a body of water. And I'd like everybody to give me perception check. Oh my god, it's so close. Perception sucks. Nine. Ten. Ten as well. Fourteen. Seven. <laughs> Nice. It's Morna who even sort of, you had been kind of not trying to stay away from them, but hanging back a little bit in the group. Yeah. And as people are walking, there is a kind of natural sort of rise and fall of the terrain, but you step through some soil at one point that just seems very intentionally indented almost like you'd compare it to like a wagon track where it leaves like a, you know, a, a defined line in the ground, but much wider and also sort of semi-circular. Mm. And as you sort of step on it, you take your foot back and you look down at it and it looks like a large sort of slithering figure moved through here. Like something with a sort of, not with feet, but with a, either a worm-like or snake-like body sort of moved through the dirt here, and you're able to pick up on that. You're not exactly sure what creature made those tracks, but you you do clock that. Okay. Um, everyone, mm. keep an eye out for um, snake or worm-like creatures. We did hear that they were up here. No, I see a track oh. specifically, I think. Yeah. Keep uh, an eye out for that. How big was the track? Can I see the track now that you've pointed it out? You can. Give me survival Standing checks if anyone wants to look yeah. at it. Yeah, fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 20. 7. 21. 7. <laughs> Ilian and Kate recognize these as Grick tracks. Ah. Grick time. Gricks are, they're sort of a, a large worm-like creature that also has kind of tentacles and has a beak too. It has like a, it, it opens its mm. kind of front area with the tentacles and there's like a small little beak for a mouth mm. that it has as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a Grick. Um, mm. If you guys don't want to fight, which sounds like that's not the idea, let's put a little pep in our step, perhaps. And, uh, and watch where that step is. And watch where that step is and get over the, Water and then up the mountain or whatever the <laughs> rules were. Uh -huh. yeah. Straight. So glad you remembered. <laughs> I do. I just uh, talking. I uh, just rather just keep going. <laughs> Straight where the book brook bends. Straight where the brook bends, bends, and then dip into the gully, and climb and go to the left. Lead the way. I will certainly do that. Uh, Doc, will you take the back <laughs> of the party? Sure. All right. Um, I'll lead. <laughs> Alien leads the way. You reach a point where you connect with the brook and you're sort of walking vaguely parallel to it for a little while. 
So it's kind of off there to your right. You keep an eye out for any more tracks of this kind. And then up ahead, even through the, some of the trees, which is making it hard to see a little bit, you can see that the brook ever so slightly begins to bend off to the right. And the impression was that you were to continue even as it continued to bend. But as the brook bends mm -hmm. off to the right, mm -hmm. there's something up ahead that you initially mistake for maybe some thick underbrush, vines and things like that. But then one of them sort of moves and you can see some of the foliage, some of the leaves on the ground. As it moves, it just kind of like rustles and you can see the shape. You can't see the creature itself, but you can see the shape of something moving in the ground there. Large or just a little guard snake? Large. <laughs> it's a great. Noticeable from a distance. Yeah. In addition to that, sort of where some of that motion is happening up ahead. It's right as the river's starting to bend off to the right. And you see some of that motion under the ground, under the leaves. And they're almost like sharks circling something in the water. They're circling something uh, that's by the bank. And you try to get a look at it. Me perception. Oh, I'm boy. Well, that's just awful. <laughs> no, that's six. Six? No. They're no. circling something lumpy in the ground. Lumpy uh, in the ground. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, if we want no fight, we have our suspect up ahead. We can just run past it. But it seems like perhaps it's circling something, hunting something. I don't care what it is, really, unless it's when we're running past it. If it's someone, a goblin that needs help. Can I take a look and see? I, sure, give me a perception. I think time is of the essence at the moment. It's one brick. Oh, nat 20, let's go. Let's go. Oh, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> time for my tight crew. <laughs> Morna, Morna sort of goes to a nearby, the closest tree trunk, and you see a little branch above you, and you just hop, and then you pull yourself, like one arm pull up a little bit. Okay. Just to give yourself a vantage Strong. point, Morna's and hot. then you bring yourself back down. It looked like a small goblin body right there by the bank that they're circling. And in addition, with that roll, I'll say there was some kind of satchel clutched in its hand there. Oh, you didn't it's see holding that something. That? As far as you could tell, it wasn't moving. So you're not positive it's dead. It's either dead or unconscious. Yeah. Sort of no movement, little creature curled up, clutching some kind Lover of satchel by the side. It is almost certainly a goblin, and he is holding a satchel of some kind. A satchel, you say? It's only one, maybe two bricks. We get a surprise on it. It's easy. You sure? There's it's one or two. Uh, I mean, I saw appendages slithering. It's hard to tell if it's one body or two. There are no like tree branches overhanging where we could like climb up and drop a rope, are there? Like airlift them out of the situation. The creep, the goblin. Yeah. I mean, there's branches all about you. You're you're very much under the canopy of a of a forest. Excellent there. plan. <laughs> um. Uh. What if uh. What if uh, I climb up one of these trees and I drop a rope and we uh, allow the goblin to to climb out of the situation? I believe it's, he is unconscious or dead. They're not just gonna let it get away. It's obviously prey to them. How about I drop down a rope and try to collect the little goblin up? Why are you so attached to retrieving this body? I think- I thought you were interested in this satchel, Docs. I think one or two people attacking the <laughs> snake and another running through and grabbing the satchel would work just fine. Just I can attack the snake. I will She's gonna I... pull out both of her weapons. <laughs> oh, you look like you were ready for that one. I'm quick, I'm quick with my hands. I could run by and try to grab the satchel. If we all get- Grab the goblin attack. as well. Ay. The goblin's gonna weigh at least 25 pounds. You look as if you can lift him. You're strong, Mr. Welker. You wanna bury this goblin? You get the goblin, I'll get the satchel. Do, we don't know it's dead. Perhaps we can save it. Whatever we do, we do it quick so we can get there. All right, so on three, let's just go and hit it. Very fast, <laughs> all together, succinct. Let's let's do it. I mean, you guys are probably like 100 feet off at this point. You see the slithering. You're, you, it's, again, it's hard to see the creature itself. They look, they're kind of obscuring themselves by slithering beneath the surface of the leaves and stuff, so. We sneak in. Sneak in, sneak in as get close, close as we can. Bubble. Yeah. Okay, great. I'll get the satchel. Uh, you get the goblin. Are we not I all hitting it? I will make a first pass, and you, if I don't get it, then you follow up. Prepare just an, a hit with us. Fine. Okay. All right, the 
Can you guys? Are you guys are trying to creep up? Yeah. Stealth checks across the board. Oh, man. Oh, no. 15. 23. 5. 27. We're getting that satchel, baby. 19. Oh, my God. Good rolls. Okay. I would like everybody to go ahead and turn their model on me. This better take seven seconds. One round. Here we go. Very quick. Boom, boom. Hold it till the break of dawn. Okay, so there is the goblin there by the river bend. Oh, let me Wait, bring. Yep, I, I got it. The right one? Maybe you no. gotta hold the it for quite bottom? a while, yeah. yeah. Oh, I was doing the wrong. Thing. So there's the unconscious goblin there. Oh, he's got a little hoodie. Oh, <laughs> got a little hood. um, there's more trees than this kind of looks. I just didn't want the battlefield to be too crowded. So mm -hmm. there's quite a few trees. There's trees overhead all around. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, we're just clearing it out. In addition, there's some sort of activity circling, and you guys are you guys are coming from this mm -hmm. direction here. So let's get everybody on the board there. There's TC. And we're headed kind of. Kate. There's Warner. North. There's Ilian. And there's Doxley. Just get you on the board. Yeah, so, yeah, so you guys were following the river, like along this way. And here's where the river starts to bend. So presumably you guys are continuing to head this way. Yep. Um, you just uh, noticed the goblin there. You can see the goblin mm -hmm. rogue. Oh. Um, oh, a fellow rogue. <laughs> not necessarily a rogue. Hey, oh, he's just, just rogue. using the rogue. Yeah. <laughs> I, st I try to get thieves can across to him. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the one moving quickly and most quietly is TC and Kate. So the two of you sort of lead the way I got there. 19. Yep. Motherfuckers. Are, no, they got like uh, 20, yeah, so. Yeah, I, really like, oh, I, I don't remember. I took you out. <laughs> <laughs> so as you guys are creeping are a little bit closer, absolute shit? Uh, <laughs> those three there that rolled very well, you guys get up nice and close. They rolled pretty okay, too. <laughs> what, what was yours? I rolled a 15. 15. That's not bad. And that's pretty good. Well, it's bargaining not, with your it's it's no, not it's 27, no, but it's Matt, not bad. I did pretty good. I got a five. <laughs> <laughs> the two of you together Weak, make a 20. Yeah. Yeah. Alien's like, here we go. <laughs> Trips on a route. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the three of you in the front that are creeping ever closer, you start to get a better look at what you might be coming up against. And there does indeed appear to be a pair of Gricks that are slithering oh, not that. by around, sort of in a circular motion <laughs> around the edges of this of this goblin here. <laughs> They're mostly obscured right now by the leaves, but you can clearly see their sort of like worm-like bodies Gross. moving through like the leaves it. there. Oh, in addition, oh, shit. as oh, Ilian and Morna begin to pass between some of the trees here, you hear like a and you look up where in the branches, sort of coiled around some of the branches above you, are more bluish sort of worm-like oh. bodies. And a couple of them are kind of dangling just overhead. And Doxley, Illy, uh, Doxley TC, and Kate don't even see this because they're like a little farther ahead of you guys, sort of moving even closer and closer. So the two of you kind of look up and see that there are more than just the Gricks that are in front of you there. This is a grab and go. You're getting closer. Mr. Tyrone, there are a lot more bricks than we bargained for. I know, we're gonna keep going past them. If they attack, we just keep going. God protect me. Okay, I'm going with Javelin out. got your weapons primed. Um, what is the plan here? I'm <laughs> holding a dash? That's not, that doesn't make sense. Um, I guess holding movement to like, as soon as somebody makes an attack, to literally right, in, right into the middle, grab and, and go out the other side. Okay, so, you, got, you see TC creeping ever closer. You, bef yeah. Before we start, uh, what would Doxley know about Grix? Like, should we avoid getting bitten? Are they like paralytic, or, like venomous? Like, what's the deal? Um, no sort of venom or paralysis. They can try to constrict you like, okay. a, like a snake would, like they will squeeze you, but uh, okay. no, no kind of venom as far as you're aware of. Got it. All right, yep. You see Doxley with her? As soon as it lands, I'm running right through there. All right, just gonna take aim at one of them. Go ahead and give me, it's an unseen attacker. You guys did a very good stealth check. So you have, uh, which one would you like to attack here? Uh, let's do the one on the left side. Left yeah, side, and what's the range on your? 30 feet. 30 feet, oof. 
We'll say that you guys crept a little bit closer. Hey, ooh. Um, ooh, that's still pretty. Ooh, you guys gotta get close. Yeah. I'm gonna say. Nice. Do you want to risk getting within non disadvantage range? I mean, it would be a straight roll because you would have advantage for oh. being an unseen, and then disadvantage from the extra range. Let's stay a little bit distant and just take. And a just do roll. a straight roll. Okay, go ahead. Huge. Here we go. Bruh. Oh, Seven to hit. That will miss. TC's already gone with the, with the launch of the javelin. I've TC's gone. running. I need everybody to roll initiative. Okay. There we go. Okay. Oh. Coming in clutch. <laughs> oh, now okay. I roll. Okay. Oh, now okay. I roll sick. <laughs> okay. 14. Okay. All right, we got 20 to 25. 21. Nice. nice. Uh, 15 to 19. 19. Nice. 15 is the Grix. Fuck. 19 is Ilian. Yep. yep. 15 is Brick. Uh, oh, and Doc's got a, an 18. Okay. 10 to 14. 14 Kate. Nice. <laughs> All right. Once As Kate's kind of to... creeping through and seeing you. the javelin <laughs> miss its mark, she still looks up at the trees thinking that they look pretty good right now, that plan of dropping down from before. All right. Good plan. Nobody wanted to listen to it. All the Grix are simultaneous? Uh, yeah, we'll do all the Grix simultaneously. So the javelin <laughs> flies through the air, and simultaneously TC is already running. And then as soon as the javelin <laughs> sticks into the ground, simultaneously, <laughs> and they <laughs> They like open up all their tentacles, like two to the side and one up and down, and you see that beak in the middle open up, and like a little tongue is flapping back and forth. (laughs) So we'll say I'll give you the movement all the way up there if you want it before your turn even starts. Yeah. Um, So this is where we'll start here. In addition, uh, given the uh, noise from before, I'm also going to. uh, Are we all the way back there? Uh, yes. Oh, those are the... These are the ones that were in the trees. That's a really evil flying there. <laughs> yeah, so these were slither... Whoa, he's gone. He's out of here. <laughs> oh, see ya. Take care of... Uh, <laughs> that guy did not want to go up there. <laughs> nope, he's gone. All right, we'll get rid of him. No, he's under there. How much does a goblin weigh? <laughs> um, I mean, they're like a the child's eyes. Okay, yeah. all right. Okay, so they're up in the trees. Right or back right away. Um, we'll say Morna was up a little yeah. further with the 15, but yeah, Alien's back here. The Grix are in the trees. Okay, where would you like Broke to start? Up with so, uh, <laughs> bonus action is disengage. My cunning action. Okay, is going to be disengage. Right. Is it an is it an action? Would you say to like try to scoop him up, and then? Yeah, that's effectively a grapple on an unconscious okay. target yeah, okay. to, to pick him up, yeah. But then I still have full movement, like a turn's full y- movement? Yes, you have, uh, it's uh, effectively half movement for carrying a, a heavy, um, okay. what's your total movement? 30. 30, I'll say it's a little more than half because he's not that heavy. Okay. We'll call it 20 feet of movement rather than 15. Great, then yeah, <clears throat> so if the action is to, to scoop up, and bonus action, cutting action, disengage. I've got him, and I'm going 20 feet north. Um, great, we're gonna pick him up there. As you pick up the goblin and pull it out of that little area that they were slithering around, yeah. you have disengaged, but they're gonna take an attack of opportunity against the goblin that's sort of, both of them kind of <laughs> try and rip at the flesh of the goblin okay. here. I, mean, I can't help gonna, him in any way. Can uh, if you would like to Turn so that you bear the brunt oh. of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's a little boy. Against Who one of them, I one will them? try to do that. Oh, okay. I will. Oh, he's a soft. I got surprised. I got scared. Uh, Fifteen to hit. <laughs> uh, that will hit. <gasps> Fuck. Loot that guy. <laughs> Loot that child. <laughs> I can't believe I didn't just grab the sash. Uh, you take five slashing. And because it hits with yeah. the tentacle, it now can do a follow-up attack with the beak. Oh, so well, the tentacle hits you, That's and it good. grabs you, and then it pulls you close, and then it. Ew, gross. So, 
five already. Uh, Thirteen. That was, that was nice. great. So cool. as it pulls you closer, you re- reel back, and the 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 beak just <laughs> snaps right in front of your face there. Um, and the second one is just, it's gonna hit the goblin, and he grabs the goblin right on the arm there. And he pulls, and the shoulder just separates from the goblin. No. Oh. And the Grick has the hand with the sad. No! Son of a bitch! I, like, in its beak there. I... Fuck you. <laughs> I... You have the goblin's body with no right arm, and the Grick oh. has its arm in its mouth. In terms of my action for the turn, can I... Toss him backwards towards my friends. We can say that's part of the same action, part of a yeah, a grab and toss. Oh, yeah, fuck. but trying to get that that arm is I'm already out of. Uh, yeah, I mean he's got it. Is you have to sort of wrestle it from him. Uh, Give well, me, I'm I mean s- an athletics check to okay. toss. Okay. Toss him. Toss him. Toss, toss, toss is. Nine. Nine, all right. You're able to throw him behind you, but not very yep. far, so he lands on the ground there. Armless. Fucker's on, uh, fucker on the right has the satchel, and I'm still using my movement to great. get away Great, so now from you've here. got your full movement, because you no longer have him. So you okay. disengaged, and you're using yeah. 30 feet? 30 feet. Great. So TC runs forward between the two Grix there, <laughs> snapping as you go by, but you've disengaged, so unable to grab you. Mm-hmm. Anything else? I mean, that's action, bonus action, movement. Okay, yeah. who does that take us to? Uh, Ilian. Ilian, back here, listening right. to the sounds of Grix above you in the trees. All right, uh, I'm just going to run straight toward the rest of my party. Okay. Um, 30 feet gets you up to there. Okay, <laughs> great. Man, a dagger would be nice. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> um, uh, that's... TC's short sword. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm just gonna say and take my turn. To say, my mother is short. Um, <laughs> Morna, you heard him. I'll take up the back. If you can get the satchel or the boy, I'll get whatever coming after us. She's got her two weapons in her hand. Okay. <laughs> okay, and that's all I can do. In my turn. Okay. All right, Who's after Elliot, it's Doxley. All right, Doxley. Okay. Uh, mm. Am I within 30 feet of the one with the satchel in its mouth? Uh, this is the one with the satchel, and you threw from further than that. So you need to move up about five oh, feet. You know? Great. I can do that. I'll move up to within 30 feet. Great. You do so. You're now within 30 feet of it. Great. Not doing any of this for free. And I'm tossing the javelin at that thing. <laughs> well, it takes a running start and just yeah. hurls the javelin. Nice. This is the one. This is the one. This is the one. You're right. Well, it's all right. Now, okay, Matt. Oh. Or... Yes. If I hate the snake enough. <laughs> so for precision attack, it says I can make this maneuver before or after making the attack roll, not before you say whether it hits or not, though, right? Um, I think uh, I think you might get to know whether it hits or not. Oh, oh really? Uh, yeah, because that doesn't really specify. Um, Sorry. I think that's part of making the attack roll. I'm gonna say for now it says, but before any effects of the attack are applied. Not effects. Uh, I'm gonna. What, what was what was the take? It would be a 12 to hit. That missed. Okay. So I I'm going to use a superiority die and Great. precision action. You may do attack. so. So I roll. <laughs> <laughs> it's flowing through the air and she's like. <laughs> that's a max roll, so plus six, so that's an 18 to hit. That will hit. Matt nice. still misses. <laughs> I'm out of here. Arm, heavily armored. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. That's a D6 plus four. Eight uh, piercing damage. Eight piercing damage, great. <laughs> great. Uh, that's mm-hmm. one superiority die. Um, it is going to make a save to try and keep the arm in its mouth. Ooh! Uh, you having hit it. Fail, you bitch. Um, I'm going to have this be. Do you have your maneuver save, DC? I'm gonna say that this is saving against that. Basically, oh. basically the strength of your throw. Okay. Have um, faith. 13. That saves. Uh, saves. Yeah. Okay. God damn it, Doxley. So as it reels back, you can see the arm flapping back and forth, and as it does, it whips its head to the <gasps> to the left, and the satchel like looks like it's gonna go into the brook no, there, no. and then the hand, the <laughs> finger of the goblin just catches it and it brings it back. It's very loosely in the hand of the Trooper. goblin in its mouth. In its, uh, yeah, in okay, its uh, I'm just gonna fucking action surge okay. and attack oh, again. You may do so. Fuck this, I want that fucking thing. <laughs> uh, okay. Wow. So this is the one you're attacking. 18 to hit. I will hit again. Okay. Ooh, uh, 
Five plus four, nine, nine piercings. Nine piercings, an excellent hit here. Well Very powerful. Done. Well done. <laughs> another javelin, it's gonna make another save here. Come on, baby. Nat 20, let's go. Fuck, <laughs> that's not good. No. No, bro. No. 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 Fuck. Uh, so manages to hang on to the uh, damn. God the damn. But you can see a good, it has to be a decent blow, but a, a blow of sufficient strength will knock something loose from its from its mm. mouth there. Mm. Um, uh, in Aqua and Alien, will, or Alien, Doxley will say to Alien, big heavy blow! That's it. I'm so fucking far away. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, that's my okay. turn. The uh, fuck are you two talking about? <laughs> that was, I use like five feet of movement. Uh, yeah, just to get up a little further. Okay, can I use like an additional 20 to just kind of start flanking around the edge here? Like this way? Yes. Great. Yeah. As opposed to towards the river? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Fast are they? Okay. I, I'm, I'm scared. <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm scared. Uh, too. A little further south. Okay, uh, so away. you started, what, like right in there? Yeah. And 25 feet, you said? Sure, let's do that. Great, great. Great, that's my turn. Okay, who's next? Uh, the Grix. All right, in in oh, almost practiced oh, unison, yeah. Ilian hears behind him just a <laughs> as three of them land on the ground from the trees there. Oops, I'm still in the green there. There we go. I'm an idiot, I didn't dash. 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 <laughs> Too busy talking to Morna? Why did I dash? Oh, I thought you said you were taking up the rear. Yeah, I don't know why I didn't. Shake it off. You got it. Get on that rear. Yeah. I am fun to talk to. I did say I was going to take up the rear. Uh, I guess this one's going to have to dash. So that one in the middle had to dash, but the other two did not. And this one is going to pivot and go to DC. Nice. And this one is going to run for the closest target, which is Kate. Okay, let's go around <laughs> up Orin here. Um, one Sorry. attack each on, we'll do um, Morna first and then Ilian second. Morna, that is a dirty 20 to hit. Yeah. Oh, jeez. And that's seven slashing. I'm gonna okay. use interception. Okay, go ahead and read that because this is the first time so, you've this here. When a creature you see hits a target other than you, within five feet of you with an attack, you can use your reaction to reduce the damage to the target by one d10 plus my proficiency bonus. Oh my two, you may do so right now. So I see I see the grid going up and I slam my great sword into the beam. One of those big tentacles that it opens up starts to tur- curl around like it's gonna smack Morna. It's not great, but that's uh, five damage reduced. And then you see, Ilian, the pommel of Ilian's sword just knock it partially out of the way. So great, yeah, it was seven minus five, you said? Great. Just two okay. slashing. It did hit with the tentacle, which yeah. means it gets to make a beak attack. Mm. Okay. Um, 10 to hit. Doesn't it's gonna hit. miss, great, nice. so the beak misses. The next one's gonna go for Ilian. Bring it. Uh, 15 to hit. Wow. And that doesn't hit. It doesn't nice. hit, great, Ilian. <laughs> You use like the armor on your elbow there. It's like a little sort of strapped pad that you use to block the tentacle. <laughs> yeah. It can't make its second attack because it didn't hit with the tentacle. Amazing. Um, we're gonna pivot over here to Kate. Ah, uh, okay. And this one is, this is the one to... with the satchel. Yes. No, uh, yes, 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 this is the one with the satchel in its mouth. So it's kind of slithers up to you and then sort of rears up on its sort of, it doesn't have a hind leg, but <laughs> as much as it can. And you watch those tentacles open up again and tries to smack you. Uh, that is a 14 to hit. Uh, no. That's gonna miss. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Misses with the tentacle, and you see as it swipes with the tentacle, its beak that's sort of in that interior portion, you watch the arm kind of swinging back and forth in its mouth, and the pouch just hanging by a thread oh there. Oh god, I'm gonna just matrix, like, back bend. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then cool. TC here with the other Grick. <laughs> Everyone's super uh, hot in Porcolo. 18 to hit. <laughs> that will hit. All oh, women. Just something about Porcolo. Yeah, the men smell bad, but damage. the women uh, are hot. Five <laughs> slashing damage. Five. And then it gets to make its beak attack. Oh, okay. Hitting. Uh, natural one. So oh, that one. Nice. Oh, natural one, let's go. <laughs> natural one, let's go. <laughs> Ow, oh, God. Um, <laughs> and it is. 
gonna be my nightmare tonight. There's a demon inside of Matt. <laughs> that is the Grick's turn. All right, uh, Kate. 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 All right, Kate. Okay, well, I was gonna use my whip to get the satchel, but now he's like right in front of he me. He is indeed. So right if I right grab it, is that my action? You can make an attempt to a contested attempt to grab it. You can, okay. As an action. And how alive does that goblin seem right now? Uh, give me a perception check. Okay. Because this thing he just got horrible. his arm ripped off. Like he's not making any noises. We can do for him. Oh, it's gonna be a 12. That is enough to see that he looks dead. <laughs> oh. Thank God, uh, no moral conundrum. I mean, he made no noise or anything when his arm got ripped Okay, off. boy's I'm dead. so happy. Can I? <laughs> and this is, okay, I feel like there's too many of them. Like, can I grab the satchel and then dash out of here? You use your movement after attempting to grab the satchel. Dash or dis, which one should I do? So in order to grab the satchel, that yeah. takes an action. Yep. Um, you could also, there's basically two ways to try and pry the satchel loose. You can try and grab it, just try and concentrate on the satchel, uh -huh. and that might be a little easier. Uh -huh. Or you can try and attack it and knock it loose, which would do damage, but maybe isn't as guaranteed as we're I'm just gonna to grab it. Great, give me a contested athletics check. What does that mean? Uh, he means we both an roll athletics. it and make oh. an athletics check. Actually, you get athletics or acrobatics, whichever you're better. Acrobatics! <laughs> yeah, maybe. 12. Uh, 14. 14. Nice. Nice. As right. it's swinging back and forth, you sort of pick your moment carefully and you kind of knock one tentacle out of the way and then you pry the satchel. As you do, you kind of rip one of the fingers off of the goblin as well. <laughs> kind of goes flying. You, you can have, have the satchel in your hand there. Baby vomit in my throat and just swallow it back <laughs> down. <laughs> so you've used your action to do that. Yes. You can run, it just will get an attack of opportunity. We'll get to try and attack you as you go. Risk. Yeah, okay. Okay, and are you running sort of <laughs> forward where you guys were headed? Yeah, into, that's, and there's, where, everybody else is behind me? Yeah, except, except for, for TC. TC, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, as far forward as I can go. Okay, great, so what's your movement? Uh, 45. 45, 45. a swift 45. She's, She's it, got it, let's go! <laughs> it is going to make an attack of opportunity, okay. and you haven't attacked, so you didn't get that bonus AC. Okay, whoops, that one. Um, 19 to hit. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh. there. Um, and how great, well, uh, you guys said I'm not that squishy. Five no, slashing squishy. damage with the tentacle. What? I'm very squishy. And that's a reaction, so it doesn't get to try with the beak. That's just Ooh. the regular tentacle. Nice. Okay. okay, so she snatched the, TC, you can see this with the grick in your face. You watched uh, Kate snag the satchel and then make a run for it. Time to go! All right, up next is Morna. All right. Um, can I tell, I, 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 oh my goodness. Uh, I'm gonna rage, I guess. That's a lot of guys. <sighs> um, okay, so I rolled a 16 on my rage. Good. Um, <laughs> can I look back and see that Morna's like getting into it and I'm gonna just she scream like, we agreed that yeah. we would run. It's not an after 16. I'm gonna, to it. I'm gonna, <laughs> oh, it's, I'm going, yeah, that might be less confusing. I rolled a 16 on my rage, guys. <laughs> um, I'm gonna uh, turn around. I can't do a, an extra attack um, here, but I'm gonna. Um, you can do a regular attack. I'm gonna, just gonna do, do a regular yeah. attack. I'll Which be weapon would you like? Bill. Right. Um, I'm gonna pick him and then um, I will run, run, run. Okay, um, excellent. So, Which one would you like to attack? Who? This was the one that attacked the, you. The guy who attacked me. Fuck that guy. <laughs> okay. Um, that's a 19 nice. plus five is tw uh, 24. Hold up for um, no. and then it's a D8, right? Should be on there. Uh, yes, a D8. Um, so that's a five. And then I have my plus two reckless from attacks. So uh, not from reckless attack, but from rage. Oh, from yep. rage. Then it's my plus two. Um, so that is a seven. <laughs> seven damage, seven excellent. piercing damage. Taking piercing damage. That end of the pick sticks into the grick and then you rip it back out. And some it makes like a sort of carved mark right between two of the tentacles, almost like it's tried to pry its tentacles too far. And now there's a split down the middle of it. Almost like that thing you get on your lip. Oh, when you're oh your boo. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> and I'll, I'll just be like, Time to go! And I'm gonna run my 30 feet of okay. movement away, away, away. 30 that's feet. I already said it! <laughs> uh, that's gonna be two attacks of opportunity yeah, here from both right. these Gricks. Um, uh, 11 to hit. Nope. And 15 to hit. Nope. Okay. Nice. Couple missed attacks on the way out. <laughs> And that's anything else? That's it. Okay, that's it. who's next? Top of the lineup with TC. Top of the lineup with TC. 
Disengage. <laughs> Look at that shot. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's <laughs> sick. All right. Down the hey, I'm within five feet, so do I get a sneak attack? No. <laughs> uh, sneak attack yourself. Nah. Uh, disengage and uh, run. Okay. So cunning that's action good. bonus. Disengage. Right. Movement. Uh, I guess I still have an action. Yeah, you do still have an action. You can get a dash or attack or whatever you want. Uh, I'll dash, but I'll kind of go west. Like um, further away from the river? Yeah, further like away. No, no, kind of honestly straight west to get an... Oh, no, this no, one. Yeah, sure. to get, get an eye on everybody else. And make okay, sure another 30 out. feet. Yeah. Great. W- w- how far away does that put me from the this guy? From the closest, correct? Yeah. That puts you about 35 feet from him. Okay. Yeah. Great. All right. Okay. Alien. Millions up. Okay. In the back, sort of hey, taking guys. on the Grix here. What up? <laughs> you wanted this. Yo, what up? This All right. You can hear the sort of snapping of tentacles behind you. All right. Um, question for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, actually, let me read this to make sure. Yeah. Yeah, never mind. So, what I'm going to do is. Glad I could help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, man. Um, I think for this turn, I'm just going to disengage. Okay. And boom, move it. 30 feet? Yep. Forward. Could take three attacks to get a dash, but I don't think I want to do that. So yeah, I'll, I'll stick with that. Um, and uh, <laughs> it's, it's time to go. Uh, there's a lot of people. Uh, but it seems to be reiterating what I've already <laughs> shared. Just as Doxy's like winding up another javelin, she hears her brother's footsteps and he's like, time to go. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right, that's, that's the end of my turn. Okay, who's up? Oh, it's me. Okay, All right. excellent. I have to get these fucking javelins back. Um, oh my god. Where are they? <laughs> uh, one of them so was annoying. right here. Like you missed throwing that first javelin, uh-huh. and then you threw one at the uh, the pouch one, right? Yes. Which is I the threw one two right? Oh, that is one. okay. So there's one like up here where the goblin was initially. Okay. okay. And then there's one. We'll say it's stuck in that grick there. <laughs> stuck in the grick. Yep. How bad does that grick look? Um, that one has that one has taken significant damage. All right, I'm I'm gonna get within thirty feet and try to attack it again. Okay, you, you, you are within thirty feet, so you're gonna go ahead and make your attack. Okay. Big win, big money. Come on. Uh, thirteen to hit. That will miss. I'm gonna use a superiority die. Okay. Uh, and add it to the roll. Uh, that's another four, so seventeen to hit. That will hit. Yep. Okay, great. I need these back really bad. Uh, Okie dokie. I hit toss. Four plus four, eight damage. Eight damage. Not Ooh, quite. Okay. Okay. Not okay. quite. Um, uh, uh, I'm gonna, oh, wow. I'm, I gotta get these fucking back. I gotta use another superiority die and as a bonus action, uh, make another ranged attack. Great. With a a quick, <laughs> like almost like a sidearm javelin throw that you quickly take it from the quiver and throw. Oh my god, is that another fucking nine? It is. Uh, so that's a 13 to hit. It's gonna miss. Uh, <laughs> and can I use another superior? It doesn't say it's a bonus action or anything, right? It's just on any. Uh, uh, I don't let me think check. there's a limit to that, but let's double check. Uh, when I make a weapon attack roll against a creature, I can expend a superiority die. Do this uh, before or after making the yep. attack. Doesn't cost any kind of action or anything. Yeah, so. We can rest. Right. We can rest. <laughs> we are fucking Probably. resting. Ilian watches uh. Doxy like enter the zone. Like you've seen that look on her face before, where she just <laughs> <laughs> one yeah. javelin after the other. Seventeen. That, to hit. that will hit. Great. And, and I don't eight. think you can't kill this. But go ahead and roll for damage. Uh, that's another eight. That piercing. will definitely. Nice. Well done. <laughs> All right. In the round. So there are. Three javelins stuck in this grick, I think, yeah. and then one kind of by the river there. I've thrown five total, I think, so I want to get. No way. You've only thrown four, right? No, I've thrown, I thrown. I I threw two in the initial the round one. and mm-hmm. the surprise, and then I just threw two down. Oh, okay. It's five. Great. Yeah, I need, I need them back. So I'm gonna run and take a second to collect them all. Go ahead and <laughs> boom. Down. You do always. Oh, I wish I had boomerang. Yeah, was... <laughs> so you're running up to the Grick. Um, I'm gonna say gathering it takes a bonus action. Okay, I can't use that this turn. So, so. yeah, but you used okay. all your movement, so you can do it at the top of next turn. Then, right. So get to gather your javelins. Um, okay. And that's full movement. Too? That was full movement. Great. Yeah. Okay, I will end my turn. Okay. Who's uh, next? Is Grix. All right, the slithering Grix. I believe they're close enough to make some more attacks. But ring it on. Slithering through the brush. Mm. Stop trying to hit me and hit me. 
<laughs> and then this last me. one is going to run up to Kate here. That's all I got. Oh, no. Uh, okay, we're going to say two of those are Ilians and one is Mornos. Ilian first. Yes. Um, one of those is definitely going to miss. It's a seven to hit. And then a 17 to hit. That is my AC. That is your AC. Oh, okay. Okay. Six more. Uh, seven slashing, okay. and it is going to make a follow-up beak attack to that. Certainly. Um, oh, that's over 20. Dirty 23 to hit. Just barely. <laughs> uh, the beak, a little less damage. Uh, four piercing damage from the beak. Amazing. So, <laughs> snaps its beak out at you after hitting you with the tentacle. Uh, the other one missed. Morna. Uh, 17 to hit. That hits. That hits. Uh, four slashing damage. Uh, reduced down, because I'm reduced Yes, down. half, yep, half damage from that. I'll also use interception again, since he's the only one close. Okay, so. oh, great. Yeah. That's great. Wow. wow. So, oh, that's four, so. Reduced to zero. zero. It is gonna make a follow-up beak attack. Okay. Uh, that's gonna miss, uh, thir- 13 to hit. Nope. Yeah. Okay, the beak misses. So they're hot on your trail, but you guys are able to <laughs> deflect the majority of the punishment. And the final one here is going to attack Kate. <laughs> Um, twelve to hit. That's oh, gonna miss. God. <laughs> so Barely. as it slithers through, it, its tentacles go out. Eighteen. Sorry, I'm confused. There's a lot of math going on. People say barely a lot, facetiously, so I can't tell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, that just straight. barely. barely. <laughs> um, okay, that is the Grix for now. Okay. okay. Uh, after the Grix, it's Kate. Uh, okay, and let me know when we're at the end of this round as well. Okay. Oh, Kate, you're up. <laughs> <What's that? laughs> it's always bad when the DM says that. Well, I feel like we're not going to take all of them down. No paladin shows up to help us. <laughs> Give me a survival check. <laughs> Just try to run away. <laughs> survival strategy. <laughs> That was terrible! Six! Six, okay. Uh, difficult, you're trying, as these Gricks are sort of descending on you guys, trying to remember what Grick behavior is like, like whether or not they can be easily scared off, uh-huh. or if you sufficiently sort of wear them down. Yeah. Unable to remember any details about uh, Gricks uh-huh. as a whole. Well, instead of just running away, I guess, um, it, do I have to... Does it take a lot of time to like load a poison vial into my town? You've got two loaded there in there in right there. now. Oh, and it it's takes, right it takes an action to, to reload it, but right now okay. you have two Dang. in the tank. It's right next to me. I'm go. just gonna spin around and like slash it in the neck. Go poison. ahead and make an attack roll. Okay. Okay. This is the first time we've seen this in a <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, So just a 20? Uh, yeah, it, it has your, uh, on your main sheet, it has your claw on it, the rending okay. talon. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh yeah, wait, rending yes. So, yeah. Is that what they call you? Yeah. It's like a good lucky. That was so bad. (laughs) Ten. That's gonna miss. It doesn't waste the poison, because that so that happens after you connect with the attack. So (laughs) miss with the claw there. (sighs) Anything else? Run! Running, okay, it's gonna make another attack of opportunity. Run! <laughs> Get out of here! You did make a the the, the rending talon is considered an unarmed strike because it's right. a fist weapon. Uh-huh. So you get an extra two to your AC from, uh, oh, from nice. using it. Oh, That's so great! Yeah, Holy yeah. Um, and get ready, eighteen to hit. Ah! That one. So as it's as you're great. starting to run, oh, it's reaching out with its tentacles, but you use the rending talon to just whoosh, bat the tentacles out of the way. The F and continue away on. Cool. Nice. Okay. We're trying to run here, guys. <laughs> I, I'm trying. Yeah, that's the uh, Kensei Monk. What's the name of that skill there? Uh, the AC one. Oh, oh, oh! I think uh, you get the extra. That one, right? Oh, the way of the, uh, Agile Parry. Agile Parry. Ooh, yeah. nice. Sweet. So anytime that's you make an unarmed strong. strike, you get to add oh, to your AC. Yeah, there. That's love that. Cool. Okay. Love it. Who's next? After kid, it's Morna. All right, Morna. Once again, you and Ilian. <laughs> We're getting out of this. In the thick of it. Uh, I really want to bop him. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it. A bop, and then I'm gonna run. Um, so feeling it behind you, you just stop and you turn. Yeah. With two weapons in your yeah. hand. Hey, Barbara, I'm gonna. Uh, that's a twelve. That's gonna miss. Fuck. And All right. Well, can... then I'm gonna come in with Barb. Yep. You can and... take <laughs> Oh shoot, that's even worse. It's a nine. That's gonna oh, miss. Oh, no, <laughs> can you sort of dodging back and forth? 
Um, oh yeah. Oh yeah, do you was I a reckless attack? Sorry, I keep forgetting about reckless attack. You need to declare that ahead of time. Oh, I do. Man. Not Baldur's Gate. Oh, it gives a damage. All right, <laughs> yeah. all right, cool, cool. All right, never mind. Yeah, Baldur's Gate lets you do as a reaction. Yeah, okay. that's wild. Never mind. I'll, I'll have to remember to reckless attack. I'm gonna run, run, run. Right. Guys, let's <laughs> run. On the plus side, they don't get an advantage attack of opportunity against you. That's <laughs> nice. Marion Street. Yeah. Uh, two more. One click and reach you. Were you able to pick up the javelin uh, uh, One of those is definitely going to miss. The, uh, five to hit, and then 15 to hit? No. Nope. Okay, both of those miss. Correct. Excellent. So even after missing, you make sure to sort of keep yourself interposed, weapons between you and the Grick, and then find your opportunity, and you dash right. for it. Um, who's up next? After Kate, it's top of the lineup, so end of the round. Okay, end of the round. The thing that you just notice as you guys are continuing to charge through the forest Please, is no. you're seeing oh, no oh. way in the trees, just more things moving along the branches. Nothing has dropped down yet, but you guys are making a decent bit of noise at this point and maybe have attracted the attention of some other creatures, maybe even some more Gricks. Uh, okay, top of the lineup, who we got? TC. Time to move. <laughs> Quietly, let's go! And I'm gonna... Uh, I'm very quiet. Um, <laughs> move or quiet, TC? Pick one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll fire at that one. That's the closest one? Nine. Great. Yeah, it's but within 30 feet, right? Pretty sure, yeah. 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 <laughs> no, it was sneak attack. When he's Read it that will hit. Nice. That's how you do it, guys. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, okay. I'll do that next. Okay, time. next time I'll do that. You I guys in the back are like, four did you see that? Dice. You hit that guy. <laughs> uh, no sneak no attack. No sneak attack. Mollocks. Uh, eight. Piercing. Eight piercing damage. Excellent. Um, <laughs> I'm continuing I'm, to run. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to actually. Can I? That tree there, can I take a look to see if there's like a grick? Give me a perception check. Yep. Specific tree. You can indeed. Uh, oh my god. Ten. Ten. I mean, some motion in the branches, but not that you can see directly above. And I'm gonna try to very quietly come up to that tree and kind of like hide behind it. Are you doing a bonus action? I'll try to do a great. Kind of action Give me a. You're gonna be stealth contested against perception against some of these bricks here. Natural 20, let's go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that TC gets up to the trunk of the tree, yeah, and you look up, and there's a little bit of slithering in the branches, and at that exact moment, you pivot around the trunk, and you hear like a... <laughs> like something drop down to look, oh, and then disappear oh, back up into the tree. That's there. crazy. You are hidden there. Delicious, all right. <laughs> that feels good. Who is next? Uh, Ilian. Ilian's up. Okay, so I'm seeing my sister. She's scrambling She's to get her javelin. Right there, yep. I'm composedly <laughs> picking up my javelin. Yeah, of course. Oh, you God. Are. Oh, oh, God. 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 Oh, I'm going to not disengage, but still run 30 feet. Okay. Um, In kind of like an angle to where I know that Doc Slee will be running to. Like, okay, like off this way? Yeah, like off, so if she ends up next to me, I can intercept or something like that, just to sure. stand in between. Yeah, so only one of them has the reaction left, so it's gonna take one attack oh, opportunity, nice. so right, two right. of them already attack. Yeah. Um, 14 to hit. No! This, right? Okay. Um, and then if I could hold my action, you I would can. like to hold a maneuvering attack uh, okay. maneuver for when a thing approaches me. Um, and is that... Um, Maneuvering attack. It's the one where I'm just making sure it doesn't say. Uh, Great. Some of them say on your turn. I was just making oh. sure it didn't say that, but it does not. So oh. that's that's okay. As long as you hit with a weapon attack. Yeah. Great. And that's what I will on my turn. Yeah. So you're you're just holding the attack, but then you can apply maneuvering attack if you hit. I think. Oh. Right. Okay. When you hit a creature. Uh, yeah. When I hit it. Yeah. I think I can expect. It. Yeah. So you're not holding maneuvering. You're holding. I'm holding an attack. attack. Yeah. Great. Yeah, yeah. Yep. That's fine. Um, and uh, say. I'm trying to move, but there's a lot of people, things on my tail. 
Uh, and that's it. Okay. Who's next? Doxley. Doxley's up. All right, bonus action. Pick up all these Great. fucking jackets. Gather all of them except for one that was still over here because you missed with one, remember? Yep, I'm, I'm moving over there and okay. I'll pick that one up too. That's another, That's we'll call it 20 feet of movement. Great. And now you've gathered all your javelins. Awesome. A couple of them have brick blood on the ends of them. But is it blue? Is it red? Uh, it's kind of black, actually. Mm. Oh. Okay, and then... Sledge. No prop. You've got this, brother? <laughs> uh, we'll see. You were talking a big game. <laughs> I'm feeling great. <laughs> Stay, just keep going. I'll take up the rear. All right, I'll use my remaining movement and then dash. Another 10 feet and then another 30 uh, feet. Oh. I'll dash for like 15 feet. I want to stay within aliens. Okay, so there's 10, and now you're dashing like straight toward that log, kind of. Like, uh, yeah, 15 feet. So 15 foot you there. Yeah, and am I within 30 feet of alien? I believe so. Yes, you are. Great. 25 feet there. from alien there. Great, that's my okay. Turn. Who's up? Uh, it's Grix. Grix are coming. All right, <laughs> um, slithering forward. Um, this one is gonna get within reach of you. Yes. So if you'd like to take your reaction. Oh, yeah. You may indeed. So I'm gonna <laughs> try to hit it. Yep. Does this no, work? I missed it. Yeah, baby. Okay. <laughs> That's gonna be 18. That will hit. Nice. All for damage. Okay, so first time I've done a maneuvering attack, I just add superiority die to my attack, which is it's an D8, right? With it, it's yep. It's my superiority yep. die. Yeah. Okay. To the attack uh, roll or to the damage? To my damage. Uh, Attacks damage roll. Your greatsword, right? No, no, no. The maneuver. The, oh, the, uh, sorry. No, no, yeah. you're totally fine. Got Superior. Roll yeah. that, and then two d six. Uh, so that's nine plus four, so thirteen. Thirteen plus uh, the maneuver damage, which is three. What, what did you say? Seventeen. Huh? <laughs> you said fourteen. Fourteen. 14 so 17, seventeen total. Seventeen total damage. Holy that one walks shit. up, and immediately you dig your heel in, pivot, and with a mighty swing, you yeah. just cleave the Grick in half, yeah, and its tentacles kind of slump to the ground. You watch as the top half falls down, and the bottom half is still like, oh. and then finally, Ooh. brilliant. All right, I'm gonna right. yell to Morna. Ah. Uh, we're good. Keep going. And you can use your reaction to move half your movement. Oh, shit. That's part of that? That's the maneuvering oh, attack. Yeah, maneuvering That's attack. You can do it right now. Move someone. Yes. Yeah, it, yeah, it takes your reaction, so cool. but yes. Okay. Yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. And it's what, up to half per half speed? Up to half so per movement speed. 15. Without provoking opportunity attacks, which doesn't matter. But that's Whoa. Still cool. That yeah. is so cool, dude. Cool. Great. Morna charges forward, feeling Ilian's inspirational words reaching her. Wow. Okay. Aww. Uh, more Grix. Uh, yes, we're in the middle of the Grix turn. They continue <laughs> to slither forward. This one's gonna be able to get close enough to Ilian there. And then this one, I don't think can really reach. It's gonna take its 30 there, and then it's gonna dash, so it can't <laughs> attack, but it is gonna get up to Morna. And this one's gonna turn its attention to Doxley here, who started to run by. Right. So we've got one on Ilian, one on Morna, one on Doxley. Ilian, that is a 12 to hit. No. Morna, 15 to hit. No. Nope. Doxley, 10 to hit. No. A bunch of. Yeah, yeah. yeah. let's go. Just yeah. yeah. Grix. The team. So tide is turning. All right, that takes the Grix turn. Who's Until up next? Like 12. Eight. After Grix, eight. eight. And let me know when we're at the end of the round again. Sure. Okay. And I'm way out of here. <laughs> I thought, what, how far is that guy? Like 30 feet? The one behind you? Yeah. Yeah, they're uh, they're a little bit behind you. There's nothing really. Thirty-five. Good. Unless I was 30. to get closer to them, there's nothing I can really do here, right? Like, I mean, I have a, I have a short bow and a long bow. Uh, you would have to swap out your yeah. weapons. Um, yeah. you could. Can I just run away? You can indeed. Can just I run, run away. and hide? Um, <laughs> can I use my? I mean, with your movement, you could get out of here. And <laughs> you could. Great. Can I get out of there? And then can I like mask of the wild and really just like. Yeah, go ahead and yeah. read that. Under that go ahead and read that. Okay. Yeah. You can attempt to hide, even when you are only lightly obscured by foliage, heavy rain, falling snow, mist, and other natural phenomena. In this case, foliage. A wood elf. Um, <laughs> wood elf thing. Yeah. Uh, give me a advantage stealth check because you're now sort of very far away from the Grix here, and they're gonna try and perceive you. Because she's a non-blue elf. So yeah. Ten on their perception. Uh, 18. 18, you nice. successfully hide. You get way, way off the battlefield yep. and then you kind of duck behind some of the brush here. Can and you I, look back and kind of wait for your allies. Can I look inside the satchel? Uh, yes. <gasps> oh, yes. Oh, you bitch. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Kate, 
now feeling the security of the foliage around you, 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 your heart rate slows a little bit. You're using some of your sort of wood elf racial sort of knowledge and training to obscure yourself mm -hmm. here in the brush. You can finally take a, a calm moment to yourself and you open the sack up and inside it is some kind of like bone, like an animal bone. And it's covered in uh, like, it looks like it's been brushed off to some degree, but it looks like it was buried at one point. Like the goblin has dug up this bone. Like they were mm -hmm. excavating something and they found some kind of bone. The bone is not familiar to you. Okay. It looks like, it, it's not so big that it looks like a leg bone or something. It might be a finger or something of some okay. creature that's not familiar to you. Okay. Yeah. He has collected some kind of animal bone. Have I read anything in, about, like, would I think this is like a saint's bone or something like that, you know, like in a religious way? You know, people, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. people, be, relics. people be saving relics, yeah. Yes, um, you don't get that impression, okay. but also you're, you're not certain, but okay. it doesn't immediately have that impression. Got it. You. Okay. People do be saving relics. <laughs> people, people be finger, people people finger be bones. Yep. Who's up next? Uh, after Me. Me. Okay, Morna. Okay, I, I got a bug. Okay. What? Going for the double and then bonk. a reckless attack and bonk. Great. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Because I know how to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, hell yeah. Um, 16 plus 5 is 21. That will hit. Okay. And then I'm going to. Um, 6 plus 3 is 9, plus 2 is 11. 11, excellent. And then you're going to attack with the other one. This is still with advantage. Attack with Barb. Um, that, oh wow, there is the exact same 12 plus 4 is 16. That will hit as well. Okay. Nice. And yeah. then I'm gonna, um, yeah, I'm gonna, uh, that's 5 plus um, 2 is 7, and then no plus 2 again, right? Um, from your. From my rage. Oh, you get the bonus damage from the rage. Oh, I do. You do? Yeah. Great. Then it's, uh, it's 9. Um, that is, uh, Piercing damage. Great. Oh, that's nice. crazy. That's one damage. You get the pick, and then as it reels back, you look into its beak that just kind of opened up in pain, and you jam Barb in there, pull it back out, and the Grick yeah. falls to the ground there. And nice. she's going to sort of like. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna go. I'm gonna and then run. run. I'm going to peek my head out of my hiding place. I like, like the thing that Mora's. <laughs> Range volume is at that exact level. Well, like no, but I also think she it silently works. screams yeah. to herself. Yeah. An internal rage. Screams inside to deal with it. Maybe. Maybe. Okay, uh, who's up next there? Uh, it's top of the lineup. Top so line. so that was the end of the round there. Oh. Another Grick goes down, and all the Gricks that are sort of still uh, sort of upright and, and looking around, they look to their sort of fallen allies quickly, and they begin to retreat yes. ever so slowly. Ooh. In fact, TC is hiding by one of the trunks there. You can hear above you, it sounded like one of the Gricks was starting to like twirl its way around the trunk and descend, oh. and then it oh. <laughs> works its way back, back down. Up into the trees. <laughs> And that is where we are going to end no! the combat there. No, we're going to oh, end cool. combat. Okay. Oh, oh, yay! yay! <laughs> we got to move, we got to move. Let's go. Yeah, I'm going to give oh, you guys a brief ride. moment to reconvene. Catch up, everybody. Yeah, catch Kate up. Here's people's footsteps. And you can still hear some of that, like, just moving through the brush, some of the leaves moving. But you get away from the river there. Now, it, as soon as you get out of the spot where the river's kind of, you can hear the rushing water, it's quiet again. You all kind of. I'm gonna step out of the shadows. I'm gonna drop down to my knees and um, touch my forehead, touch my eyes, touch my mouth, touch my heart at three times, and then. Lorna, I hate to interrupt you. We should keep moving into the goalie. Yes, straight. And I'm gonna sheathe my weapons, and I'm totally chill. Cool. I'll start walking, but uh, who's got the pouch? Please tell me we didn't just do that for nothing. I've got it. What was in it? Nothing that I can determine, but let's worry about that later. I feel like the clock is ticking. So not gold, then? No, it's I not gold. It. Yeah, okay, let's catch up. Because <laughs> I'm assuming I'm like fast walking ahead of everyone. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Get over here, yeah. yeah. And I'll... All right. I I'm assuming 
that we didn't grab the goblin because someone checked its vitals? Or he it was, his, he's dead. Yeah, he that poor dead. guy was dead. Okay. Long before we got He was there. dead, dead. Gotcha, well, great. Missing limb, dead. He looked pretty dead when I got there. Poor guy. Okay. You guys continue forward, very much kind of on edge now, knowing what might be kind of in the trees above you. But slowly you start to approach where there's a little bit of land depression that very, that very well may be the gully. Mm. And that is where we're going no! to end. No! Oh, oh, you bastard! You made it I want to give you a chance to, to at least probe Kate for the, the contents of the pouch. I'm but, pretty uh, fast too, you know, you can't <laughs> run away from me. <laughs> She's faster than me. <laughs> you want to arm wrestle? <laughs> Fine. <laughs> arm wrestle. <laughs> that is where we're gonna end tonight's oh, episode. Uh, nice. An excellent Dude. combat. We got to show off some excellent, uh, some of your combat Good. capabilities. Yeah. Oh, oh, man. Man. The claw. I didn't get a chance to show off the full, oh, the full effects yeah. of the clock. But it, yeah. it kept you from getting hit with an 18. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. huge. That's, that's pretty cool. Amazing. Um, <laughs> that's that's where that we're gonna means. pick it up next week. We're now on the cusp of the, the gully, which uh, is where we'll be keeping an eye out for any of those gray and green uniforms of the clinkers, as they're called by those in front hollow. <laughs> Blowing the whistle. Getting ready. Uh, no, got it, 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 got it. Reverse got it. smoking something? And you can mull over what the goblins might have unearthed here, whatever operation they had going. Dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> There's dinosaurs in front. Oh my god, if, if Matt ends up having dinosaurs in this campaign, I will shit my mouth. <laughs> that would be so oh, yeah, fun. Yes. I need an archaeology book, immediately. <laughs> <laughs> it's a goblin saint. It's the saint of the goblins. Right, and it's yes. like in conflict with the gods. Yes. Ooh. <laughs> Is that better or worse than dinosaurs? No, I want dinosaurs. <laughs> I want the, no. I want the gods are dinosaurs. Goblin King. <laughs> Um, thank you guys so much for joining us. Yeah, thank um, you. This was awesome. We're always thrilled to have you watching and, and sharing the adventure with us. Um, we'll pick it up again next week. Once again, if anyone wasn't here when I said it the, uh, the first time, next week we'll be doing a li our little our first Notch and Soda talkback oh, so at the at the end Love of the stream. So we'll get to talk about some of the stuff that ha happened here and um, and mull over theories yeah. Like, yeah. like the ones we've posited here. That one's gonna be. Subscribers only on Twitch, right? Think so. Yeah. You can get like a preview of it. Yeah, you can get a preview of it um, yeah. and decide if it's worth subscribing to our channel. But it's going to be like some. <laughs> Clearly, nice, we've some done this a lot. We're yeah. To so just thank people that have supported the show, and yeah. then it's also going to be available after the fact, just on Patreon for the people that also support us there. Yeah. That's nice. Oh wow, That'd be great. Um, and we'll try to answer some questions too, in addition to uh, you know just sort of talking ourselves. Yeah. But, Ooh, uh, yeah. but also, join us in the Discord. There's going to be a new channel, or a, yeah, a new little forum channel to talk about this episode in particular, but there's all kinds of really great stuff on there. Uh, I put it in the link for Twitch chat, but TikTok, our profile has a link tree where you can just find the invite to our Discord. Oh, wow. yeah. What's up with Morna's Rage? What's up with the Claw? What's up with those things? What's up with those? <laughs> What's up with TC taking like the damage people. all the time? <laughs> first, <laughs> taking the big damage. What is up with TC? Um, uh, also, for whatever reason, I don't know why, but some people are having trouble seeing the Brunk Hollow Discord channel on yeah. Discord. It's very weird. Even our own cast members can't see sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know like, where it is. We're looking into it. We're looking into it. We're looking into it, but I might just put like in the announcements like direct links to that part of the channel, and as soon as you click on it, it shows up. You can like, you hit a button that's like, add this to my channels that I want to follow yeah. or something. Then, I guess. We'll figure it out. It. Yeah. But anyway, I just uh, wanted to let you all know. Yeah. <laughs> um, what? Right my face is on a goblin already. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, yes. it's awesome. Is it really? What's happening right there? <laughs> oh, I think this is a reference to the fact that somebody said earlier that oh my, my name God. is a short name and a sound. <laughs> oh my Two. God, you're, you're a goblin. It's not a one syllable, but it's close enough. Goblin and so oh goblin. my God. <laughs> Anybody quickly Hank. remember the name of the goblin leader? Hack and Slash. Hank. No. Hank. 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 Well done. Holy Hank. shit. All right, everybody. Oh, and uh, also, oh, yes. um, just a couple quick people. It's just what kind of a name is Rusar, Ru Ari, and then uh, resubscribed, and then Ali Slayer gifted the sub. Thank you all so, Thank so much. Thank you. Um, much, much appreciated. I have a quick announcement. Yes. There's a new Percy Jackson book that comes oh, out yeah. this week on Tuesday. I have a podcast about Percy Jackson, so if you are reading the brand new book, it comes out Tuesday. You should listen to my podcast. It's called Seaweed Brain. You can yeah, listen to it everywhere. Where? The foremost authority on yes. Percy. Truly. Okay. Uh, That's all. Awesome. Yeah, please listen. Um, yes, of course. And we'll catch you guys all next week for the next episode of Bronk Hollow. We love you all. We'll see you then. Good night, everybody. Good night. Signing Bye. Off.